Comisionado Ramiro Caballero. Comisionado Daniel Chávez. Commissioner Ricardo Medina. Present. And Commissioner Itza Flores. We have a quorum, and Commissioner Itza Flores was unable to attend the, the workshop. Motion to excuse absent members. Yep. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Chief, excuse. Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, item number two, public testimony. Anybody sign up for one? No, sir. Excuse. Item number three, administrative. Uh, welcome remarks by City Manager Amber Mayor. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. We have a uh, vibrant and exciting budget workshop for you this morning. <laughs> we know y'all love all these numbers. Um, we tried to make it as uh, entertaining as possible. Uh, we're not going to flood you with a bunch of uh, useless information. We, we do think we've cut it to what we need to cut it to. Um, we changed it up a little bit this, this year. In years past, we had a couple, maybe a day or day and a half workshop where all the departments uh, presented. We did change it up this year a little bit where the departments presented to me and, and the ACMs and we vetted them and put the pertinent information in the final presentation that you're going to see today. So welcome. Uh, Mayor, you have anything else? Uh, no, uh, th I think you did a good uh, good introduction. I'm, I'm just glad to see everybody here. We have some new new faces. Uh, everybody, get a meal. I didn't see you this morning. Uh, Chief, you want to get up and say hi to everybody, make sure everybody knows who you are. And then we have Judge also here. I saw this. Anybody else? Uh, Public utilities. Public utilities also. Everybody who's a new face, if we could, you know, just say hi because I want people to know who they are and also they're watching. We grew up with this. I mean, not just yeah. Veronica and Ignacio, come on up also. Yeah. Judge Flores. And, uh, yeah, Ruben. <coughs> we can't escape. You're the newbie. Come on. While they're making their way up, uh, just good morning, everybody. I'm Andy Harvey. I'm the new police chief and really uh, excited to be here. Uh, like the city manager said, uh, budget's always uh, an interesting time. So I uh, look forward to meeting everybody out there some, you know, soon and just happy to be here. Thank you for the welcome. Thank you very much, yes, Mayor. Chief. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Veronica Ramirez. I'm the human resources. Uh, director for the City of Far. Thank you for having me. Um, I've enjoyed it so far, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Good morning, morning. Griselda Rincon Flores. Thank you very much, Mayor, Commissioners, and all my fellow directors for the warm welcome, yeah. and for everybody always being willing to help. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Ruben Rosales, the Public Utility Director. I want to say uh, uh, thank you to everybody. Uh, uh, have been very helpful in helping me out and making me feel welcome here and helping me with all this new uh, system. And it's a great organization that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of. What a wonder. Good morning, Mayor, Commissioners, Directors. Thanks a lot for having me here. This is my first uh, workshop budget. I'm very excited to, to go for it. Uh, once again, thank you for having me here today. Absolutely. Thank you. Is that everybody? Thank you, sir. Once again, good morning. Um, for people watching, welcome to your budget workshop. We're very excited to be here. We've made quite a bit of uh, progress since our 2015 election campaign, and th we're seeing one of the better, better things we've ever done for the city of Far. This, this uh, venue needed to be updated, and we've, we finally got it updated. But it's important for people to watch because you need to see how your money's being spent. Uh, I'm very proud of what uh, our leadership under Wiley and the entire administrations have done in the last five years. They've always kept us on budget. They've done wonderful things for the city and growth, job opportunities, keeping our public uh, safe. And so I'm very excited to be here again for this budget workshop. Uh, it's true, we always are, our meetings tend to be sh a lot shorter than most people. That's because we're focused and we know exactly what needs to be said. And we don't, uh, we eliminate a lot of the fluff. So with that, I wanna make sure, Mr. Why do we keep us sure. on track, please? Yes, sir, right. thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, we'll go on to um, item number 3B. Uh, discussion and pending and our personal city 
proposed city projects, programs, and individual department divisions, duties, roles, structures, evaluation, discussion of the fiscal year 2021 and fiscal year 22-23, budget for all the city generally and including the following entities, tax increment reinvestment zone, tax increment reinvestment zone two, Fire Economic Development Corporation two, Fire Housing Finance Corporation, Fire Housing Finance Corporation, Jackson Place Apartments, and Far Public Facilities Corporation discussion on capital purchases, capital improvement projects, personnel, and debt. And um, for all this information, Mayor Commissioner, we do have a separate uh, agenda for this, for the daily, how the day's gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Carla's gonna give you the overview of the, we're gonna get into what happened at the end of last year, what was presented, what we did, and where we are for this year. So Carla. Wiley said it's an exciting time. To me, it is. Um, it's part of my job, but I personally love the uh, budget season. So, okay. Let's just start like Wiley mentioned. Oh. Okay. Tested it out first. talked about and discussed in the prior year budget. Um, we think that it's important to kind of like give a refresher. Let's start with the major highlights that we discussed last year. Last year we focused on a few things. One of the important things that we talked about was the insurance cost going up last year. So we increased it by 10%. We also added a total of 14 employees. That, that we added 14 employees during the budget of 1819, and we were proposing for 1920. But a total, it was gonna be an addition of 14 employees. We also talked about the water rate increase. We were discussing, we were, choosing, we were trying to choose scenarios. We also talked about how much money we had lost for municipal court fees. Last year we noticed that the trend of revenues kept going down, so it started to make an impact on the general fund. So we discussed about that too. We also mentioned that um, because of the new bill that passed last year along with the property tax, some, we were gonna lose some franchise fees. So that translated to about half a million dollars lost in the general fund. So obviously it was a material impact that we were gonna have. And most importantly, we talked about the options of the issuance of debt. Last year, uh, since we increased the tax rate, we, at that point, we still didn't know, or the commission didn't have a, uh, hadn't made a decision yet up to how much they were gonna raise the property tax. We had a property tax rate of 0.6490 cents. This is what we show you last year. So these were the options that were given to you in order to issue debt. So the uh, scenario or the tax rate that the commission decided to adopt it and that we proposed ended up being 71, 72 cents, which was gonna give us a potential $28 million debt. So last year, we pretty much said to you, okay, if we raise the property tax to 71, 76 cents, we're gonna be able to get $28 million. Now, recap, out of the $28 million, we already issued 25. So we increased the tax rate and we were able to issue to cover the debt for that. So I guess we accomplish, we accomplish what, you know, the purpose of the tax rate increase. 
Um, I'm going to go over some fiscal facts for 1920, which is the current year. Right now, I guess it's, it's crazy because of the pandemic, so I want to highlight, you know, whatever impact has had in, in revenues and expenses and how it reflects into our budget. Let's start with the revenues. And remember, this is still during this year, which it hasn't ended. We still have August and September, two more months to go. Let's just start with the major source of revenue, which is property tax. This is just for you to see um, that by March 31st, like right before the whole pandemic started going on, 90% of property taxes were collected, are usually collected by March. So our collection, which is pretty much between 94 and 96%, stayed as budgeted. So by pretty much by June, we had already collected 94% of our property taxes which translates to $60.7 million for the general fund. Compared to the year before, that gave us $580,000 more for the general fund only. Any questions so far? I see some faces. Uh, just one, the, so that because of new homes being built, new uh, commercial retail, uh, warehouses and industrial stuff? Correct. Okay. Yeah, because the year before, remember, this is, we're still talking about this year. So that $16.7 million collection that we had was based on last year's appraised value. We grew 6.3% last year. And whatever we increased in the property tax rate only reflected for the debt service not for the general fund. So this $580,000 is purely based on the growth, on that growth that we have. At the 63 yes. cents. Yes. So what does it look like? If it's 580,000, what is, are you gonna get to that at the 71 cents? No, this is already at the 71 cents. Okay. Right, this is already at the 71 cents. But what I'm trying to say is that the 71 cents only has an impact to issue debt. And right now, I'm only talking about the general fund for, for purely operations. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's talk about the other major source of revenue, which is sales tax. Um, sales tax, I guess I wanted to put the trend since 1516. If you notice, we were going up. Two years ago, or for the last two years, we were experiencing like about 10 to 15% increase in collections. And if you notice, 15, 16, 18 million, uh, 20 million dollars, and then here is unfortunately where I guess we kind of like stay the same. I have a projected actual of being at the end of this fiscal year, which is two months to go, of 20 million dollars, 20.4 million dollars, which pretty much uh, puts us at the same collection rate that we had last year. Now, in a way that's good news because everybody was, you know, trying to like, we were panicking or seeing worst case scenarios that how this pandemic was gonna affect us, especially for the sales taxes. But fortunately, for the city of Far, we didn't see a, a bad impact, at least compared to other cities. So, but we're still trying to be conservative. So for next year, since we're expecting to end at uh, $20.4 million, we're being, you know what, let's, let's budget $21 million for next year. So again, I want you to see that even though 1819 compared to this year doesn't have a negative, it's not a negative because we're collecting more or less the same as last year, we, are still, I guess, we didn't collect as much as we projected. Since the trend was showing, like if you notice here, that it was going up, from 1819 to 1920, we actually budgeted a collection of $21.5 million. So even though we're gonna collect 20.4, which is the same as last year, we still didn't collect as much as we expected, which that translates to a projected loss, 
compared to what we expected of $1.1 million. Well, and is any of that, is that refund, I mean, can we get any of that back with the CARES? Yes. Um, the, 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 not right now, the second yeah. round. Oh, the existing CARES money is not for, for operational. Yeah, not the Hopefully CARES. Hopefully the new ones Okay. Yeah. The new Heroes Act, yes, it'll cover, uh, it's a, theoretically it'll cover any losses. Something that... Yeah. But even with that, go back to your graph. Even with that, though, from 2015 till 2021, that's almost a 20% growth. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's that's amazing for, yes. a, for a business. I mean, that's, uh, let alone for a city. That's an phenomenal growth that you've seen in sales tax. It is, and that's why we were very confident that from 1819 to 1920, we were going to grow even more and we were confident that we were going to hit the 21 million dollars yeah but the pandemic, the pandemic hit so i just want to add mayor commissioners um the pandemic did hit we did lose like everybody else sure uh, but we're not dependent on the sales tax like the other cities are uh, our budget is compromised of a lot of different funds and we diversified a lot uh, one thing that did that did us and we'll see it is is the bridge that's that's where our sales tax hit, like other cities, where it hit us. That's a bridge, but well, remember the the, the bridge uh, got hit for two main reasons. There's a political hit, right, that we had to absorb, like everybody else, and then the pandemic. The sure. political was the immigration that nobody can budget for. You can't foresee what the political landscape is going to be in, in dealing with immigration that's been plaguing us since I don't know the 50s. And uh, it just showed its ugly head again during this uh, lifetime. And that's going to be ongoing. It's, it's not going to get solved until the DC decides to change the immigration policy, which I doubt they will. And then second of all, nobody can predict the pandemic, right? The last one that happened in the, was the 1918, right? When it, when, it, when it happened. And so of that magnitude. So none of these things you can foresee or plan for. Right. You just have to adjust. I'm just happy the fact that you guys are you know, are dealing with the situation and that every city and county and state is dealing with and doing still doing very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could have been worse, that's for sure. Yes. Yes, sir. It could have been a lot worse. And that's where we want to give thanks to the mayor and commissioner that lets us plan and do the finances and adjust as we need to on the fly at a, at a staff level so we can make sure the city still keeps going. So. Yeah, and it's not all, you know, uh, doom and gloom. I mean, one of the best things we have is our staff. Like, uh, when, you, when you talk about the bridge, you know, it was uh, Luis and Fred and, and Freddie and, and the team as a whole that, although we had barricades placed, right, and that's, we have no control over that, that's a federal issue, uh, and then we had traf traffic stop, automobiles that is, we quickly, we didn't whine, we just quickly adapted. And our staff was able to adapt and optimize the hours of operations for our commercial traffic, which kept us in the positive, and it, kept, it kept, actually make, made us better. But that you know, says a lot about our staff, that they recognize a, a deficiency where, and we roll with the punches and the city leadership was able to make uh, lemonade out, out of lemons. So I'm very happy that they did that. And it's only going to get better. Yes, sir. All right, Carla, go ahead. Uh, Commissioner, you know, you I just, just a point of clarification. That August and September, we still really don't know what the amount is that we're going to collect. Correct. That's just projected. The only so projected could... number since the last two months. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, so at the end of September, when when all the numbers are finalized, that number or that negative number of one million one thirty, if I can yeah, have a hard time yes. seeing it, uh, might be less or might be more. Correct. Right? That is yes. correct. Okay. It just depends on how much we collect for August and September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me continue. Um, another source of revenue that we also saw. Um, decrease and we talked about it last year and I mentioned in the highlights that we discussed is that we were also losing fine collections I guess for tickets for the court mm -hmm. we if if you see the trend 1616 there was a point where we were at 1.5 million dollars you see the trend that is going down in 1819 we were hopeful and a little bit conservative at the same time and we ended up with a $700,000 collection, and we said, okay, you know, maybe it'll go up. So we budgeted at $800,000. Unfortunately, fines and collections were barely picking up when the pandemic hit. 
So that's when we started seeing a decrease also. And so far, based on what we collected, we're projected to end with $497,000, which is a loss of $319,000 in the general fund. Now, just for uh, clarification, Carla, because I, I mean, you, this is a great presentation, but it has nothing to, this doesn't reflect on the management of, of finance. This is a uh, policy that the commission decided to do because uh, I, would, I want Judge Flores and everybody to know that this is something that we uh, worked on because uh, in past, we've, I mean, we've had great police chiefs, don't get me wrong, but in the past, our alignment wasn't where it should have been when it came to the public. We felt that there was excessive tickets being uh, administer to our public and you know everybody needs money to pay the bills and take care of the kids so we made a constant decision that we'd rather uh, uh, educate our public when it came to uh, you know them uh, having little minor traffic violations and or when it came to the pandemic the stay at home shelter order Correct. and they're violating it we'd rather educate than uh, even put more burden on them and I know the commission uh, you know they, they can speak for, for themselves but I was in agreement that we had to do this so Although it's a, from a numerical standpoint, I understand that it's a, it's a significant reduction, but it was, it was done with the full intent of helping the pop population as a whole. And we understood it was going to have a financial impact, and I don't want the judge or the police chief to get the wrong impression that we're, we want them out there get, you know, administering tickets like crazy and or fines just to make up a financial deficit that we artificially created because we, don't, we want our public to be treated a little bit fairly and more education than anything. No, absolutely. This is this is something that I mean. It, it came with the with the pandemic, and like you, Mayor, you you mentioned, um, you know, we wanna we wanted to help out the citizens at the same time. But this is just so you have an idea, mm -hmm. more or less, how it's impacting the general fund. Also, real quick, Mayor Commissioner, I want to add, um, and we have stressed that with the court and with the police chief, we're not here to increase fine collections by tickets. You know, that's that's not what we do. We took the direction of the commission. Um, we're being very uh, sympathetic and empathetic with our, with our public when they get pulled over. There's no reason to issue a ticket. They don't issue a ticket. What that increase was this year, we were looking at from 713 to 816, was the old old fines that hadn't been picked up that oh. we're trying to collect on. Right. That's what we were looking at the increase. Yeah. Not, we're, not additional tickets. Because as we discussed, uh, Wiley, we, we're completely against quotas, right? We're not here to fill quotas for the police. For the, we don't want to give the chief the wrong impression. We're here. We're not here for quotas. If, if it's necessary, I'm sure they'll give a ticket as needed and bring people in, but we're not here to make quotas. Sure. No, and obviously because of the loss <coughs> of traffic and you know how Course. everything has slowed down, it was gonna have an impact anyway. Okay, continuing this, okay, what is, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the, the title. This right here, it's recreational revenues. Let me just, put you recreational revenues include swimming fees, sports program fees, um, after school program, everything that has to do with recreational purposes. Obviously this is the one source of revenue that had a major impact because of COVID. So I want to show you right here if you see the budget for 17, I'm sorry, for 1920 we were expecting to collect about $800,000. And because of COVID, 137,000 projected. This is pretty much a loss mainly in swimming fees, you know, because of the aquatic park, all the park programs, um, all the rentals for the facilities. Because a lot of people, we, we collect money for the renting this, for the <coughs> renting the, the civic center, the event center. So it's just so, so that you can have an idea of how much gross income this uh, pandemic impacted negatively in the city. Carla, and I have a question. Yes. Why are we, or 2021, why are we proposing such high increases when we're not even sure what the pandemic's gonna be or where it's going to uh, push us to? Because if it stays the same, I mean, if we stay with the pandemic, it's, Ain't gonna go anywhere. What, what do you mean? <coughs> I mean, like the 489,000. But if, if this year with the pandemic we roll into next year's and we're still rolling with the pandemic, you know what I mean? What are we like wishing? I know that's what the, the proposal is. You know, that we're hoping to get there. So for for the budget this year, 
we have to make some assumptions. Um, we have a <coughs> lot of things that changed this year that have never changed in any city. The pandemic did hit us hard. We're being conservative on the 49, even though you might think it's, it's stretching it, uh, we are still being conservative. That is probably about half of the, we're estimating about half of the population that used our programs. That's what it's gonna be this year. If we had you know, 10,000 kids in the programs that last year, we're gonna shoot for 5,000 this year. Half of whatever the student, the, the population was on a regular year. We're, we're taking care of count, uh, social distancing, everything else. You know, we had to make the assumption, is it gonna be shut down or is it gonna be life plus COVID? And yeah, we think it's gonna be life plus COVID. This is a projection for the summer, it. which I think the summer's gonna be fine. For next summer. year, summer. This correct. is for next summer. Really, so I think this is the yeah, right Yeah, next summer is 49. The current year is the I think, six, I think six, you six. probably didn't under budget it, but I think, I think it's good. Well, I think because by the summer, it'll be fine. It'll, I think the vaccines will be out by then. Well, so, so like I said, we're taking the, our worst case scenario that we think it's going to be half of what we've ever done. Um, so if, if it increased above that, then we should be good. Well, I, I understand that, but my, my mentality would be like, Let's uh, plan for the worst, and hopefully we get the best. Yes, sir, I agree with you. Um, and, and I have to balance that with being able to keep all the staff employed and keep everything running. And like I said, we have to make some assumptions. If we cut $499,000 from the balance budget that we're provoked for giving to you today, then I need to cut somewhere else. I need to cut programs, I need to cut personnel, I need to cut capital, I need, we need to cut somewhere. No, 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 I, I, believe, I completely understand that, but I'm just, because if we don't get that 49 and we keep all the programs, well, shit, we're going to get pushed back a little more into the red, no? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's why we monitor it every year, every, every, uh, every quarter, we give you the quarterly financial report, how the city's doing, and we make adjustments throughout the year. This year, we had to reduce the budget by $3 million. So, I mean, we, we make those contingencies. We're, we're, this is the best case scenario we have now, and if first quarter of, of 20. 20, 2021 budget comes in and we're not hitting the project projections, then we'll, we'll have to cut it down. Or we'll have to make the cuts. Sure. Okay. So I just want, that way people, if they are watching, they can know what we're doing. We're hoping we do better, but don't be surprised if we end up doing cuts. For sure. Right. And like Mr. Medina mentioned, I mean, even it, the 489000 it's assuming pretty much next summer. So, you know, even though it's wishful thinking, uh, we have to make some assumptions and we're still being conservative because if you notice we were hitting almost the six hundred and fifty thousand almost seven hundred thousand yeah. dollars i have a question yes sir i'm okay with the 489 projection but is from 797 to 137 that's in those 797 we were including the cost of the festivals that we have Right? No. The revenue. The revenue that from the festival. Whatever revenue but we get. Are you also considering the the lack or the that we're not doing any expenses for, for the same? Correct. And I'll get into that. So uh, the 37 should be adjusted. I'll get into I'll mm -hmm. get into that specifically in a little bit later because mm -hmm. I, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, this is purely pretty much the money coming in. This is gross revenue. This, this, is, right? revenue. this is just gross revenue. Yeah. And future slides, I'm gonna touch base on on, okay. on the expenses. Okay. Correct. So I guess, like I mentioned, just refreshing what type of revenue, because it's, it's a lot of money. So, um, okay. Remember that we're still talking about this current year budget, which is 1920. This is pretty much a summary of the budget that we ad adopted, and then the amendments that we made, and what, what impact did it have. So because of all the factors that I mentioned, uh, less than expected sales tax, less than expected uh, municipal court fees, less than expected swinging fees, we, we amended the budget. And the net difference was pretty much a reduction in revenues of $1.1 million, or 2% less, compared to what we actually budgeted. Because there were some areas that we lost revenue, but there's some other areas where we actually got a little bit more. So the net difference is $1.1 million. So pretty much we collected $1 million less. Yeah. 
Now let's talk about the expenses, the current expenses for this fiscal year. This is also the summary of the budget, what we adopted, and the amendments that we made, and how that impacted. So if you notice, we started with a $56.3 million budget, which is the same as here, right? We had a balanced budget. And then we made two amendments during the year, or we had made two amendments during the year, one in December and the other one we just did in July. So the difference or the impact of those amendments is an increase in expenditures of $2.6 million, or a 5% increase. Now, these $2.6 million include several one-time item expenditures. So they're not reoccurring, re not all of it. It's not like we increase it for $2.6 million and we're gonna have those $2.6 million recurring every year. A lot of this is um, just one-time purchases and one-time expenses. Hold on. Carla, if I'm not mistaken, uh, about $1.9 or $2 million of that is the one-time expenses? Correct. Correct. So that $2.6, $2, $2 million is a one-time expense. And just, just for an example, we're talking about one-time expenses, like the, the bonuses we gave at Christmas, those are one-time expense. Yeah. That's a big chunk of it, too. Correct. Any questions so far here? No. Okay. So again, this is just to summarize pretty much revenues and expenses. How we started, the first amendment, the impact, the second amendment, and pretty much where we're at right now. So what this means is that pretty much we're saying, okay, we're amending the budget to dig into our savings for $3.3 million. But the actual numbers or projected is that instead of digging into our savings for $3.7 million, we're only gonna end up digging for $62,000 because again, at the same time that we're losing revenue, we obviously management took action and we try to cut as much expenses as we could within our power. So yeah, Commissioner wow. Mayor, and, and one of the things we did, remember when this pandemic first started, uh, we already have a lean budget, but we decided to make it leaner so we put a higher freeze in. Personnel is our number one our liability, mm -hmm. our biggest liability, because that was logically the biggest place we needed to freeze. So when we did the freezes, that freed up a lot of that money. Right. And if you notice, I mean, it makes, it makes a difference. Yeah. So this is pretty much what we're projecting to be. So, I mean, again, like, like we mentioned, it's, it's not, we're still in a good position. It could be a lot worse. I don't have, I, we don't have to give her a bonus for saving us all this money, do we? Sir? We're not going to have to give her a bonus for saving us all this money, do we? <laughs> no, no, because then we'll go to a, a deeper loss. Yes. Well, hold on, hold on. From 3.7 to 62. <laughs> she didn't save all the money. I told her. Who's me? Really? Really? It's a team, sir. <clears throat> okay. So, again, this is what we, we just talked about, I guess, so that you can see what uh, amendments what was the purpose of the budget amendment number one and two? Like Wiley mentioned, the Christmas bonuses. And of course, that's a one-time thing. But that makes up for, you know, a majority of it. That, that was about, with benefits and everything, about $700,000 out of the $2 million. We added four positions during this year, so they're reflected also in the amendment. Those will be reoccurring. We made some compensation adjustments. Uh, the City Commission approved one time incentive agreement. We also had some, um, the, the court, the municipal court was remodeled, so we allocated some funds to reflect that we were gonna make those expenditures. We also had, we centralized and we combined uh, the law maintenance within one, one under one umbrella, so that, that changed the budget a little bit. And obviously the decrease in revenue. So the net effect, those negative $3 million that we said we were gonna dig into our savings, it's a combination of all of this. Wow. Now,
Now let's go to, okay, before I move on, any other questions for 1920? I think, I think you guys have done a phenomenal job. I can't believe you, you changed 3.2 million to 62,000. That in itself should make anybody happy, any company. You should go run the hospital, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so let's, let's start talking about this proposed budget year. Let's start with the main source of revenue, or one of the major sources of revenue, which is the property taxes. We presented this, uh, this slide and these numbers in, I think, last two city commission meetings, where we're showing the increase in property tax value. So last year we had a 6.3 increase. This year we're showing an 8.6. So if we, from $3.1 billion in property value, we went up to 3.46. And I guess I, I like to do the little graph so that you can see what pretty much makes up for the values. 32% commercial, 42% residential, which that one has increased in the last two years. 1% um, mobile homes, um, and vacant lots about 6.7%. So that that's so that you can get an idea on how much, and you know, we'll, we'll be doing good. And here, I'm showing the trend of the growth. Like again, if you notice, the worst year that we had was two years ago. And I remember this, you know, we, we talked about it in the workshop two years ago. Last year we had that 6.3%, but this year it's an eight, anything higher than 8%, it's, it's really, really good. And I guess the last time we had that was in 1718. So this is so that you see how much the city is growing in terms of property values. Yeah, and like, like Carla said, Mayor Commissioners, remember, anything above eight's good. 8.61 is the highest we've had. This chart only goes back to 14, but I think since about 2010, that's how much the is, most recent. How much, is there a slide somewhere here that shows it's because, uh, I mean, I'm sure the housing industry and, and the, all the commercials have popped into this to add to the, to the bottom line growth, right? Is there a slide? Did you separate that into? We, I don't think we have that, but we can. Okay. Yeah, sure. We'll do it for you. Yeah, but this is directly related to the, the programs y'all put in place, the yeah. housing program, the incentive to get for residential, to get quality houses out here. Uh, for years, a lot of FARS development was these uh, small, and nothing wrong with them, but small over homes, mm -hmm. 1,000 square foot lots, 1,200 square foot homes, and uh, we've upped the game, and it's showing. Yes, sir. So I guess what that translates, those property values with the current tax rate that we have, will generate $23.6 million overall. That's the levy that we used to make to collect. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's assuming 100% collection, and that's to be split between the general fund, which means for maintenance and operations, and for debt service, which is to, to pay for debt that we have. So this is a, the, the, the portion that goes to each fund. Now, what does that mean additional compared to last year. So that 8.61% increase pretty much translates to an additional $1.4 million for the general fund and another $0.95 million additional for the debt service. Wow. And that's already adjusting it to the collection rate, the realistically the one that we have, which is about 94 to 95%. So in other words, the increase in property values is going to bring us $2.42 million additional compared to last year. So here is a summary of what we're proposing. I guess this is just in the graph. I'll, I'll go into more detail in the next slide. So because we want to be conservative, and uh, property taxes are going up, but at the same time, we're being conservative in all the other sources of revenue. We're pretty much proposing the budget to almost stay the same with no increase. So the net effect of all the changes that we're doing from this year to next year in order to balance gives us a negative point, 0.7%, which is almost pretty much no change. Now, <coughs> this is the breakdown of the revenues. This is compared to last year. If you notice, the negative is what we talked about. We mentioned the fines, 
we mentioned revenue producing uh, facilities is pretty much the, the like the swimming and the recreational because we're being conservative there too interest revenue it's, it's something that i guess we have no control it's just you know the, the market mm -hmm. right now so i mean if you <coughs> notice it's a 53 percent decrease and we're being conservative also but that's like about hundred and fifty thousand dollar less revenue that we're expected for next year we're reducing also the transfers because like um, city manager mentioned we depend a lot on the bridge so if the bridge <coughs> reduces revenue it also affects the general fund what so are leases the lease proceeds the, those are the proceeds with um, the financing that we use to purchase capital equipment so everything that the whatever proposed capital that the city buys we pretty much finance it so we reflect the money that we get to purchase that and obviously since we have to have a balanced budget this is the breakdown of the expenditures so we're also proposing 55.9 million dollars again you notice 55.9, 55.9, mm -hmm. and the expenditures obviously translates to a negative also 0.7%. Now, where's the change? Um, we, we thought it was easier if you see it per department. So pretty much those are the, that's the net effect for each of the departments to get to the 0.71% decrease compared to last year's budget and if you notice there's some adjustments and there's some uh, proposed changes and cuts in order to balance this year's budget why are, why are you cutting the police department why <coughs> yes sir the police department were um, like we said the first thing we did was do a hiring freeze um, in that hiring freeze we found out going through Every personnel, there was some personnel that hadn't been hired in a couple of years, uh, so that was what we cut. It was a. Um, so you remove you remove slots. You didn't fire. Yeah. Any, you no, didn't we fire didn't fire. No. None of this is letting go of any personnel. They're all vacant positions. It's by attrition, then. It's not that yeah. you cut. They, 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 never, were, they never filled the slots. Yes, sir. And, and and what it was also, it was a position that originally started out as a grant position, had no had no uh, money to the city, and it turned into a position. That was funded by the city through the years, but it was never filled. So we just cut that one. Oh. And the other one was, I think, a records clerk. <clears throat> that hadn't been filled in over a year also. I, I don't want to hear any defunding shit that's going on about defunding police departments. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, might be get, I might be getting ahead of myself <laughs> with the police department because of the collective bargaining and stuff like that, because I know the ratio of our police department and what, uh, Commission. what their salaries are we're going to talk about collective bargaining and executive session. That's what I said. I might be getting ahead of yeah. myself. Okay. Executive session, we'll talk about it. Okay. Any questions? Any other <coughs> questions so far? No? Okay. Okay. So, again, where is the change? How, how do we balance? Obviously, in order, we, we have to, our job is to propose a balanced budget, you know, by law. So, we have to make adjustments. We have to make assumptions and we have to make decisions. So this is pretty much what we're proposing in order to balance it. A net effect of a decrease of 5.5 FTEs, which means there's five employees and a part-timer. Like Wiley mentioned, we're not cutting any, we're only targeting the vacancies. And we are reclassifying or reassigning some vacancies to and give those vacancies to other departments that are requesting staff. Oh, let me add real quick, Commissioner's Mayor, that 5.5 like says it's a net effect. So there was, I think, like 12 positions that we cut, and then there was seven or eight positions that we added also. I'm sorry. So this was just the net that was left over because we did increase in some departments. We did increase in, decrease on some. I have that slide in the, yeah. the, the next one. So another change that we made, or not change, but I guess assumption, is that we are projecting a 5% increase in health insurance costs. And obviously, we have to be prepared. Um, claims always go up, so we got a, we got a budget uh, for an increase, and we always do. 
Another important thing that we adjusted was that if you remember for the last two years, two years ago we presented a, a five-year plan of a compensation study. We presented um, an allocation of about $300,000 per year for the next five years. This year we did phase number two and that translates to about $300,000 in the general fund. So in order to balance this year's budget, we're not including it this year. We're proposing not to include it this year. It's, a, it's an option. But it's just so you know that the balance, the budget of $55.9 million this year due to the restrictions and the COVID uh, consequences and the impact that it had to our revenues, we had to <coughs> take it out. Other major adjustments that we made, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll go more into detail to the next slide. I'll, I'll show you right here. Sorry, pardon. What would, you, what, would, what would phase three cost you? 300,000. Right. It, it, that's on the conservative, on the conservative side. Okay. Correct, yes, sir. Emily? Yes, sir, it was uh, 300,000 every year. Um, but the main goal that the commission set out was for everybody to get some type of adjustment and that's been accomplished. Yeah. Uh, there's some newer people that come in and some other people that have been adjusted due to the law, like some of the thresholds for, for exempt employees went up, so we had to raise those adjustments. So some people might be out of whack. Uh, but in executive session, we'll talk about it if we want to go back and adjust those people. I think one of the things we need to clarify is the fact that I think, uh, I mean, I'm fine with what you guys are doing. I just know that uh, if the, when the HEROES Act passes, you know, we'll be in a different financial situation. Oh, yes, sir. And I want to, uh, you know, obviously we, we love our employees and they do a great job. Th them to understand this may just be a pause. You may still have it readjusted before the end of the year back to the original plan if we get our funding that we're supposed to. Because yes, we will no longer be in that deficit, right? We'll be right back where we started. So uh, I, I don't want to close the door on it. I just want people to understand that we need to, we need to hit the pause button for right now. That's all. Of course. Yes, sir. So again, this is just so that you see, like Wiley was mentioning, um, we're proposing to cut those negative, it's only, it's vacancies. We're not laying off any people, it's just positions that have been vacant for more than six months, pretty much. But if you notice, you know, some departments are requesting uh, positions and we are proposing to give those. So pretty much in a way we're reassigning some of the vacancies. Fire department, public works. That's for the general fund, and that's this other table. It mentions the other funds because I wanted to show, I guess, the total. Um, the water distribution division for public utilities. We're also cutting one, proposing to cut one vacancy. Uh, the bridge and the golf. So pretty like the net change again. It's a negative 5.5 decrease in FTEs. What are we cutting in the bridge, 1.5? It's <coughs> one part-time uh, intern that was budgeted, that was never, never filled. filled, and a business specialist that was never filled also. It's been budgeted for the last two, three years. Three years, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the other adjustment that we're making in the general fund in order to balance is the committed 380 agreements that we have uh, with uh, Top Golf, the one that we engaged last year, and Far Town Center. So based on the numbers and the agreements that we have, this pretty much translates to $400,000 um, in the general fund. So what we're saying is that to these for these agreements to be paid by other sources for the next year in order to balance. Because that alleviates $400,000 in the general fund. Right. So that, that makes a difference. So we're using another bucket. And these are all incentive based, right? I mean, they have to earn it before we ever split anything. Yes, sir. So that $400,000 is an estimate based on, on sales and property taxes. Yes, sir. Right. So they have to earn it. Sometimes people think that. Uh, I've seen other cities, they just blankly will give money up front to a business to bring them in. 
and or guaranteed no matter what, but ours is not. Ours is based on the fact that they got to earn a certain percent of business that we agreed upon, and only when they ex ex exceed that do we start our incentive program. Correct. All right. Yes, sure. Okay. So moving on, just I just want to show you the proposed capital equipment that the departments are requesting so oh. that you can see. Hilda, hold on real quick. Um, you all want to take a break? It's been about an hour and a half. Oh, mm -hmm. let's get rolling. Uh -huh. You're good? You're good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay. So again, I break it down here. So the departments in the general fund are asking for a total of $1.5 million. I put the true impact on budget because, like I said, all of these purchases, we finance them. So pretty much we, we, find, we, we borrow money to pay them. So the true impact on a yearly basis for the purchase of those, for that equipment, for all of those equipment, it's $161,000 every year in the general fund. And that's, that's usually the norm, you know, because we, we want to spread the cost um, with the useful life of the asset, because of course these get depreciated. Yeah. So the fire, the, the engine, the brush, everything has like a life, uh, five to seven year life, lifespan. So the, on the equipment, I know we said this is the commission meeting, and I know the purchasing is here, right? So mm -hmm. let's remember, um, we don't want to pay more than we have to. Mm -hmm. But the caveat is if we, uh, with the, like the vehicles, I remember we had a discussion, whether it's going to be a Ford or a Chevy, I don't really care, what, which is it. To me, it's going to work the same. All right. But instead of buying it from, say, Houston or Dallas or somewhere else, why not get a comparable vehicle here from, I don't know, either Toyota or Ford instead of a Chevy, because we're used to Chevys. I'm just using an example, but we'd rather buy local. We want to buy from far or the Rio Grande Valley rather than keep buying outside, but as long as, you know, it's just a, uh, a preference on the vehicle versus uh, performance, I understand, but if it's just preference and I'd rather try yeah, it as hard as you can while you keep buying local yes, from, our, from our dealerships in the Valley. I, I think, but on, on, on that note, Amos, I think it's more that the pricing is so much better up there than down mm -hmm. here, especially on trucks mm -hmm. and stuff like that when we go, and then I think correct me if I'm wrong, like we go to buy board, a lot of that's already set prices. So oh. like, you know, like a truck that we're going to be spending, and I've seen that through all the years, a truck that's going to cost you $29,000 here, we're getting it for 25000 through buy board because they're, they're selling it like in quantity. So the sure. police department gets so many of these vehicles are for the police, the different police departments. So it's like first, first come, first serve kind of that deal. So we're saving actually and I understand what you want to do, yeah. but we could shoot ourselves in the foot too. No, no, I don't want to. That's what I, said. I don't want to pay yeah. more. I want to pay the same. But if you're able to go to whoever Bogus Ford, for instance, Bogus, yeah, right? for, that's for and Ford, you yeah. go and, and you tell them, look, this is what I get from <coughs> buy board, and they agree, I'd rather you do that, yeah. right? That's all I'm saying. But I don't want to pay more. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm okay. saying, if all things being equal, let's buy local from our, our vendors, especially if they're from far. We have dealerships yeah. in far also. Well, sir, we got it. Especially from Toyota, since they're from far. Yeah. We have Honda, you have Honda. <laughs> well, Toyota uses Toyota as well. <laughs> uh, Toyota, Toyota's, Toyota's are pretty Toyota weak gas. trucks. Like I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, once, once we know the price that, that say, Bybor is going to give us, right. can we negotiate with the dealers and say, this oh, is what we're what getting from Bybor? Yes, sir, I would think yeah. so. Yep. But, but, okay. Any questions on this request? Yes, that's the purpose. I just want to be sure that you keep an eye on that, what we just discussed, and you make it a directive, if you don't mind, uh, to our so people. Sir, we'll put it to the purchasing policy. Yes, sir. Yeah, at the other question, the grab pool roll up the first step. That's the what? brush truck, Pilar, right? Pilar. Okay. Yeah, the combination of brush truck and grapple truck to pick up brush. It's a brush truck that's got the grapple arm on it to pick it up. So we don't have waste management doing that, or? <coughs> Yes, sir, we do, but we do also, we get a lot of calls from individuals from people clean up alleys and stuff like that, that waste management doesn't do, they just do the monthly brush pickup. When we go clean up alleys and stuff like that, it's... Is, is, it's, it, uh, is this cheaper for us to do this versus to pay, because we have a contract with waste management, right? Yes, for so many pickups. Have you done the math? Is it cheaper for us to do this, Carla, versus pay them to do more rounds, I guess? Um, usually it is cheaper because waste management has their contract, they're going to do it once a month only. Um, anything outside of that is probably going to come at a cost for us. Plus, there's a time factor. Usually, when y'all call or we got to clean up an alley, it's it's, it's at a last minute notice. Okay. So we can always go out there and readjust our staff. And, and where do we dump all this trash? 
Edinburgh Landfill? Yeah, we have we have a contract with Edinburgh Landfill. How much do we pay there? Is that taken? That one, I don't know. Do you know that one? 1552 a ton. 1552 a ton for construction debris and mixed waste. That's what we pay at the Edinburgh Landfill. And this, this unit, we're proposing to use it primarily for the illegal dump sites that pop up every day around the city. And we want to create a hotshot crew so that when a management or a council member or a citizen calls in, we can respond to it right away and pick up before it attracts more illegal dumping. And it's a one-man operation. So right now, we have to send a three-man crew, a backhoe, and a dump truck. And this will let one person go and address it immediately. Okay. I, just uh, I talked to the gentleman from a waste management just I was talking to Jaime. And you're saying because of what we just went through with the uh, this little hurricane that hit us, obviously they're unexpected uh, situations that they're also backed up. Like yes, sir. incredible. <clears throat> I mean, they can't keep up with the pickups. It's just that bad. Yeah. So they're sending extra crews. In fact, they're bringing another crew down from San Antonio to help catch up with the amount of trash that's out there. And that only, it only makes sense. Yeah. I mean, we didn't expect the hurricane to hit. I mean, we got like a double whammy this year, the pandemic and the hurricane. Oh, yes, sir. So he did bring down a crew already, I believe, right? He did bring down one crew, um, but they were already behind before the hurricane even hit. Mm -hmm. So what we did, um, Public Works has a standing contract that we have every year for debris collection for emergencies. So we did initiate that contract. Um, they should have had it yesterday, but we're working through some uh, third-party monitoring contracted issues. Hopefully, we'll have it fixed, fixed today so they can start helping us out. And There's just, and just a quick program. note, I mean, I, uh, I think our staff, everybody here, with uh, what we've gone through this past year, you guys have done a fantastic job, especially after this hurricane, how you guys reacted, how you guys pushed forward, how you prepared. Guys, I mean, I just, my hat's off to you guys. You guys did a fantastic job. I mean, our flooding, we had some, but really it was kept to a minimum, and we were probably the, the least impacted city, I think, looking around the other, talking to other commissioners and other mayors that I've talked to in this past couple of weeks, and uh, you guys did a fantastic job. It's incredible, <coughs> and especially with the cuts that we've done, so I want to tell you guys thank you all very much for the effort you guys have done to make FAR what it is right now. I really do. <laughs> yeah. Talking about a mess, um, how come we haven't sent the school district a fine for all the wee, weedy schools that they have? <laughs> I mean, I've been complaining to Victor forever, and um, it's a mess. And, and here we find the, the, the residents, and we have the biggest, supposedly with the biggest budget, the school district, and we don't find them because they don't clean their mess. It's a mess, especially next to my house. But. And I keep, I keep complaining, but we're not doing anything to, to address that. Why is it? Yeah, so they, they did uh, contact the schools. We do send them letters like every other vendor or every other person out there that has a weedy lot. Um, if they don't cut it, we'll have to go in and cut it for them. But they were on a break. They finally came back, and they're getting caught up again. Um, you know, about finding them, it's a professional courtesy. They're another entity in the city that public service to the city. Uh, we try to work with them as much as we can, but as soon as the commission, I mean, we'll do them like everybody else. Well, we just find them. That way we can budget or balance our budget. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't cutting grass good exercise? Maybe you should cut his grass and go outside and do the school. He stays healthier. We're trying to take care of you, sir. In summary, this is pretty much what we're proposing. I guess I try to make it, you know, kind of cute so that, yay, but at the end of the day, we are proposing a balanced budget Great. for the general fund with all the assumptions that we just discussed. Now, pretty much that's it for the general fund for now. I'm going to go into other funds unless you all want to take a break or no. if I continue, better for me. Okay. Um, we also wanted to mention the hotel motel taxes. We discussed this two years ago because we were seeing the trend also of the revenues going down. We have the, if you see the trend, we were almost at a million dollars at some point in 1516 and we started to see a decrease. 
in revenues. Now, just as sales taxes, we weren't impacted as negatively as we thought due to COVID. So if you notice, we actually did better than what we budgeted, yet we did worse than the year before, but not by that much. You know, you only see a decrease of $54,000 compared to last year. But we were expecting a bigger loss in hotel motel taxes. What we did, um, the city passed an ordinance uh, waiving the late fees, like the interest and penalties. So we gave that room to the hotel owners to be a little bit late, you know, as part of like helping them through this pandemic. But we, they were still pretty much paying. So is this uh, <clears throat> mainly competition is that since 2015? Yes, yeah, sure. That's when the McAllen uh, Ware Road went online. All those, yeah. all those uh, hotel motels over there by the convention. That's that's the year. When so I it is, right? Yeah, sure. And also, um, occupancy right now at the hotels. Do you know by any yeah, chance? Sure. They're they're all almost full. That's right. It's due to the nurses and everybody right. coming in. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, I'm bringing it up for a reason. Uh, all politics aside, whether people realize it or not, uh, one of the people very instrumental in getting this done was the governor's office. They wanted to be sure that they uh, brought people down. Also. We're going to display some patients that are low acuity into some of the hotels and that didn't have a place to stay. Sure. So they aggressively push to have a lot of these people stay in these uh, places rather than uh, apartments and stuff. So it, it really helped out. Sure it did. So for that, we're thankful for, for his support. Sure. So here I have the breakdown of what do we do with those $600,000 in hotel motel revenues. That's pretty much the summary of the breakdown. The majority, 63%, goes to debt service. This is related to the nature park that we have. We issued some tax notes two years ago, uh, over seven years. So I think we still have four years, four more years to go to pay. Um, the other, another portion goes to support the chamber, the festivals, and of course advertising. All of these funds are allowed to be spent and used. Um, under the hotel motel tax revenue. You know, they're compliant with the use of trust. Now, moving on, the hotel motel taxes supports um, the Greater Chamber of Commerce. That's a change, that's something new that we had. We budgeted last year, but it didn't really start, I guess, you know, until later. But this is so that you can have an idea of how much or where we're at compared to what we projected. And so if you notice, total revenues, we expected $280,000. The major source of revenue for this chamber, for the Greater Chamber of Commerce, is a contribution from PEDC of $150,000. And the other contribution is from the hotel, which is the $68,000 that you saw. So, and of course they do generate revenue and the sponsorships and the memberships. We actually collected some this year. So in revenues, the, the Chamber of Commerce did collect some money because they had a lot of vacancies or not a lot of vacancies, but vacancies, they only have one or two staff only. They have major savings and their personnel. And so of course we're projecting to be in the positive uh, of for 167,000 at the end of the year. And we're proposing pretty much the same budget for next year. And before anybody asks, we are interviewing chamber director positions Thursday morning. What? We're, intervie we're interviewing for chamber director Thursday morning. On the, I just, on memberships, have we thought about going out there and having somebody do a huge membership drive and pay them on performance, I because I remember years ago, they once did this. Some crazy guy came down, and he pumped up the the um, the community. Some community leaders. He went out there, and we increased our chamber membership like about 400 percent that one year just by bringing a guy in. I remember we I ended up competing against a, a 
Gordon Jenkins from Security State Bank, and we went at it. I mean, me and him went at it, and we, you know, I think as commissioners, we should all take the initiative to help do that, to help build up our, okay. our chamber. I mean, the mayors, all of us, go out there and, you know, challenge each other to see what we can do to bring, because it's just not about the, the far, the, the businesses in far. You go out and you get outside, outside oh, the area, yeah. and you bring them in. No, but you do. I mean, that's what we did. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. We raised, I don't remember how many thousands of dollars that year. It, it was several years ago, but I've never seen the chamber do it again, take that type of action to do it again. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's something that we can really, really, I think we raised like about sixty or $70,000. I don't know if you remember what. That was several years ago. But we've never done anything like that again. So, I mean, it's something that you all might want to bring up once we get the new chamber. And just... And we, they paid the guy on performance. Like he got 10% of all the new, uh, all the money that was brought in. To incentivize them. To incentivize yeah, them to yeah. promote so, growth. I mean, it, it wasn't going to cost us anything to mm -hmm. do it. It's just all the extra money he brought in. I mean, it, he, and the guy ended up in three days made like 20 something thousand dollars. <coughs> but it was money that we never saw. Yeah. Well, duly noted commission will We'll bring it up I'll, get, I'll get with you on that a little bit later so we can sit down. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, for the chamber budget, I don't Maybe I misunderstood last year where we had uh, allocated the waste management monthly payments to them. Didn't we do that no, last sir. year? It, the monthly mm -hmm. payments for waste management are going to Parks and Rec. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, okay. You mean their donation, right? Hmm? Yeah. The donation, you mean? Yes, yeah. The donation. Yeah, they had said parks and recs. The donation. Yeah, but I, I just remember something about that money being going to the chamber for some reason. Yeah. I guess we discussed it, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I just remember it clearly. They yeah. saying that when, they, when that guy, Jaime, the other gentleman came in, that they wanted to, uh, they prefer to donate to the parks and recs. That's fine. Okay. As long as they donate somewhere. Okay. Um, moving on, let's get to the bridge. Are one of our major contributors to the general fund. <coughs> right now, like what you see right now, it's a graph, of course, of the trend for the last two years and what we are expected to collect by the end of this year, what we're, what we're proposing for 2021. So, if you notice, we did have an increase from 1718 to 1819 due to COVID again, or maybe not necessarily to COVID, but I believe it was one of the factors that affected, uh, we're expected to be lower than last year. So we collected $14 million for last year. Now we're saying we're gonna be down about $400,000. And because we're being conservative and at the same time, we're hoping, like Wiley mentioned, to have life plus COVID that everything pretty much comes back to normal and we are expecting to, to be back at the $14 million collection for the bridge. Now, this is a comparison from last year's budget. So if you notice, because we're, we collected less than the year before and we were very, very positive, I guess, or we were hoping to collect more, you see a decrease in revenues of 15.6%. A lot of it also is the lease proceeds. We issue $1.7 million this year to make capital improvements to the bridge, including repairs uh, it for, for the office expansion for the building. So I guess this is this current year, 1920, but I guess the way it shows is that it's, it's a decrease because we're not gonna get, it's not a reoccurring source of revenue. Mm -hmm. It's just a one-time thing. So if you notice the expenses also are going down, because again, we have to balance the budget, and the transfers are going down too. And again, this is in order to balance. So where's the decrease? Like I mentioned before, the decrease is pretty much in the capital improvements that we issued this year, where we're planning to spend this year, and whatever money is left, we'll spend it, we'll spend it the next year. 
but all the other expenses, supplies, maintenance, contract, transfers out, in order to balance, we need to have some cuts at the bridge. So this would be the impact. Now, I mention this every year so that you can have an idea. The bridge generates about $14 million, but it takes only an average of $3.5 million to operate. That's pretty much the operation money, excluding any capital, which in this case excludes the $1.7 million and excludes any debt service. So this is pretty much salaries, maintenance, repairs, and daily basis, daily day, uh, expenditures. So 67% of the revenue or the profit that the, the bridge makes goes out to other funds, to the general fund and to the debt service. And this is the breakdown of where the transfers go. So $9.6 million out of the bridge go out to support the city outside the bridge. The general fund operations, $6.8 million. The bridge also helps support the debt service in order to keep our taxes a little bit lower. So $1.3 million. The UTRGV agreement that we have, uh, $400,000 for the medical school. It also supports the event center and the golf. So that's a total of $9.6 million. Oops, all the golf course, I'll make it a cemetery. We'll make a fortune. Yeah, we're too close to golf. <laughs> no way. So the golf course, make it a golf uh, cemetery. No. <laughs> so again, this is just so that you can, and again, I have this graph every year, but it's just a reminder of how much the bridge contributes um, to outside. Is this the last year for the UTRGV? I'm sorry? When is the last year for the incentive? It's five hundred thousand dollars every year up to two thousand and twenty-three. Twenty-three. It's a fixed yes. It's a fixed amount. So you still have okay. two, three years to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, okay. <laughs> Any questions for the bridge? Why do we have three hundred thousand dollars for event center operations when we don't have any more events? That's a good question. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll go into that slide in, in, in a little bit. And I can show you the event center uh, proposed budget. I guess yeah, assume it, it stays. Yeah. Hmm? Hey, Pilar. I'm going to pick your brain real quick. Um, how, much do we, how, much do we, uh, how much is the Army spending on the 365? On 365, about $250 million. $250 million. Okay. And that... Three hundred what? Three twenty, right? Yeah. And then um, the road that we built, we helped build over there, the, the, the big overpass. Was that twelve million or? Huh? Sixteen, million. sixteen right? Okay, that's uh, sixteen million. And then, uh, and then also we gave them far. We helped them out with the military highway project. And it, and it was at least 12 million. <coughs> so that's 400. So we recognize the, the importance of uh, what we're doing with the bridge. I mean, two thirds of, over two thirds goes to the operations. And so, you know, I just want people to understand what, what this, uh, what the administration has done with the RMA, thank God RMA is here. But the MPO plays a vital role for us at City of Far. And a couple of things that have happened, uh, number one, the MPO did move forward and fund the overpass on is it San Juan Road, where is that? As part of our IPTC project, and that's a $12 million infrastructure. And then, um, of course, the RMA, is, is, we helped them out by uh, moving money, essentially what we did, right? We uh, took money from the west side of the county appropriately, because it was being wasteful, and we uh, helped the RMA fund the 365 project which is their uh, nearly $320 million project, which exits the bridge, so to speak, right, w uh, westward. When you add that to your $38 million of bridge infrastructure that you guys are, are doing, that's 
because of the DAP projects, right, mm -hmm. and also the 11B rider out of the state contributing as well and with the MPO. I mean, that's, uh, that's well over half a uh, billion dollars in infrastructure going in into the South Far area to support the bridge they're either directly or indirectly. That significant amount of money. And that's because we know the bridge with, is a money maker for the city of FAR. And all this is gonna max out its uh, footprint, so to speak, and allow more commercial traffic and uh, likely more commercial. We're not gonna be doing a lot of auto, but it's gonna help these numbers in and, and, and the future. But we have to make those investments now. And I just want people to know that the MPO has played a significant role in, on, on your behalf and you guys have have smartly, wisely used it, and especially with the partnership with, with the RMA, because those, those things are needed, and now they're working on the uh, IBTC, right? And uh, <coughs> it's projected to, you guys are gonna finish your environmental win? We should have the environmental wrap this fall. In the fall, yeah. And it's already on the uh, tenure? It's important for it to be in the, what's it called, the UTP, the Fire Transportation Plan, because it, it allows funding to be allocated to it. And it's, it's projected, last I checked, it was supposed to cost about 220 million, but I remember the exchange was supposed to be 150 and we're up to 300, and they funded it. So we anticipate that IBTC, we have 95 million on it right now, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we expect the, the tech stock, so to speak, uh, because it's uh, on system, meaning it's not off system, it's, and it's not tolled, it's the only section of the entire toll uh, roadway that's, that's uh, being created that's not tolled. Um, we anticipate it being funded right after they uh, finish their environmental because now we're going to show progress. So in the end, uh, the far residents understand that you guys are going to invest almost $750 million in that area for the betterment of the community and all that contributes to your bottom line. So I anticipate those numbers to be going up given all the infrastructure investment you're doing. Not this year, but in the following years you'll see it. Uh, moving on. Now, one of the most important things also, of course, of the, the bridge right now, it's the projects that we have, the FY15 and FY16. So this is a table just summarizing pretty much how much we're getting from, um, from federal assistance, state assistance, and how much our contribution or our portion is going to be. And pretty much we're projected to we're proposing to issue debt, and it's already accounted for, uh, to cover for the portion of the city of FAR for the bridge projects, which is $18 million. So, Wiley, on that, on those docks, are we going to be um, operating those ourselves? That, uh, I don't know. I don't think we've got that far in the operational plan yet. Correct. Yeah, we haven't got with federal government as far as who's going to run them, who's going to be under uh, some type of uh, permit or license like we have now with the stevedore or what. We just need to get over the hurdle of building them first. Because we're building, might as well plan as to who's going to run it so that we can get prepared and run it ourselves instead, sure. of, instead of having somebody else do it for us. We'll approach CBP and Because uh, mm -hmm. I know that there's complaints about that service right now. It, it, it's, it's being run. Yeah, we're hoping they go on like 2022. Right. But it's at 16. <clears throat> Just so that Luis can be prepared and have everything ready by the time we're ready. You don't want to tell him a month before you have an operation or get it started. It's late <laughs> then. It's, yeah. uh, it's not going to be us. Yeah. It's going to be them telling us. The, the, the good news here is that we're funded. Correct. Right. The bad news is the federal government, not us. Right? We're ready to go. The federal government's usually delayed about a year to two years on every project, no matter what we do. That's just their uh, bureaucracy, right? But right. I just want to take home away. Operations are extremely important, but we have, we have plenty of time to sort that out, just so you know, commission. Because the, whatever the federal government works on these projects, they've been, you know, not the most efficient partners that we had. <laughs> and uh, still faster than usual, right? They usually take five, six years, but at least we got them down to two years. But a lot of these projects are going, to, are going to be in a bit. It's not going to happen all at once. And as a matter of fact, they asked us to s slow down because they don't want us working on two parts of the bridge at the same time. So the limiting factor is not the city of FAR. It's, it's, it's the federal government. And I understand where they're coming from. They don't want us tripping over each other. But uh, again, 
big picture is we have good infrastructure money. We have it already. It's fully funded. We just need to execute. And then the operations, absolutely, it's key, will come down to bear. But we'll see when that arrives. We'll cross that bridge yep. when we get there. Uh -huh. Correct. <coughs> so now, and I'm going to say it one more time just in case. Um, I'm happy to be here and continue. But just a reminder, if you would like to take a break before I continue. I'm just following the agenda. If you want me to continue. Yeah, it's 10.30. Take a yeah, break. Take a break. Okay. How many people over? So then, break right now. I usually don't take a break till three in the afternoon. we've collected 18% more. This is just a graph that shows the, the growth in actual accounts, I guess the growth that the city has had. So the 18% increase, it's mainly due for the increase in the, in the rates. Where I guess we have seen like a one to 2% growth in number of accounts in the last five years and pretty much it looks like that it's the trend. So you have more usage, right? That's what it is. You have, you have more usage, more accounts, right? We have Occurring more. usage and accounts that yes. are being set up. I mean, the rate could be at a dollar, $10, but, it's, but the, what's, what's helping you grow is the fact that you're having more growth Correct. in the accounts. Right, but that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a combination of, of, yeah. of both. Yeah, also, I'm sorry. Also remember, Mayor Commissioners, water is real dependent on the weather. We can grow the accounts, but like this year we had the hurricane and there was a lot of rain. People are not watering and using water and all that, so it all has all the, a lot to depend on the weather too. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I guess with that 18% increase, we're proposing a budget uh, for the utility fund for $16.5 million. And um, I broke it down by department and by, you know, the debt service. I want to show you that that's the major portion that goes um, from that source of revenue, which is pretty much why we increase the water rates. So 29% or $4.8 million out of utility revenues go to pay towards the debt for infrastructure projects, for capital improvement projects. What's, what's non-departmental? Non-departmental pretty much includes um, some legal fees, uh, raw water purchases, like some water rights purchases that okay. it's, I guess, across 
um, not necessarily attributed to, to, to one department. So just to, we don't lose sight here. So Bobby, we're, um, it's a lot of numbers, but basically what we're doing, I mean, we, we, as a commission, we talked about this, is that the fact that our infrastructure was aging and we had a lot more growth in the housing sector, a billion dollars, as a matter of fact, and mm -hmm. the appraisal has grown. We have more uh, commercial growth as well. So there's more usage. And then we have aging infrastructure. So uh, you guys took a proactive way to do this rather than having things break down as it had been previously been done. Now you guys are being proactive and planning for today and tomorrow. Correct. So the two main ones, what were the two projects that we went after? We got the South, the South and North project, the Red Dog. Uh, the the new lift stations and the new infrastructure that's being put in. And that's just real quick, and before, just so people have a little bit be aware, a lot of it, we're getting rid of lift stations, which were, they're moving more to a gravity. Every lift station, if I'm not mistaken, I think we were averaging like $200,000 in maintenance per lift station, something like that, right? Some, somewhere along. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So if we lose, if we lose five lift stations, we just saved a million dollars a year. So a lot of that's not even projected in these numbers yet, right? Correct. So we're going to see a big difference once we do the new infrastructure that's already going to get started probably next. Yes, sir, it's already the next one. within the next four or five months. Mm -hmm. So just eliminating the lift stations, and I don't want to put our utility guy on point or anything because he's he's too new. Mm -hmm. but, don't scare uh, him off yet. I'm Don't scare them off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to be seeing quite, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, it was like seven lift stations we're going to be uh, eliminating uh, and we're building like two more, four but they're going to be seven. like Cadillac lift stations. So yeah, we're putting the money into it, but in the overall, just with the elimination of those lift stations, it, they'll probably pay for themselves for those projects that we've got going on for them because I think we financed them, what, for 20 years? Yes, sir. The debt's for 20 years. Also, Commission Mayor, remember, um, other than supporting our own population right now, we still have the ETJ we're trying to plan for also. We're trying to get capacity at the water plant, capacity at the, at the sewer plant. And all, all this is going gonna, is gonna to lead to opening up the ETJ and making it, making, it, making it better for the city. For future, yeah. Yeah, but that's, I just wanted to bring that up because that's, th those numbers aren't even projected here, guys. I mean, so it's going to be, will they be eliminating some of the debt just with our savings? I just want, Carla, I just want to make sure you, get, you told the public what, why did you go up in your water race. This is why. You're yes. doing it for a reason. You're Correct. not doing it because they were low. Nope. You're doing it because we have need, we have growth, we want to fix problems now and prepare for the future, and all this is addressing those things, so it's a proactive measure you're doing, and it's well within our, our number one, our right to do it, but we're doing it for their, their, be, their betterment. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, no, and, and it's like, what, $20 million of infrastructure we're putting at the north, 30. the south, the, the, or 30? 37 we're doing the reservoir the also. Yeah, it's the next slide. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll go okay. into detail into that. Yeah, so, so hold on, Carla, before you get into that, like the mayor said, the he wants the public to know, and I think it, it is important to stress that all the money that was raised in the, in the sewer and water rates that went up went towards debt. It didn't go to give salary, it didn't go to the operations, it went towards debt. I think people forget, you know, that everything has a cost, and the residents, you know, under take for granted, I guess, all the services that we provide. Water and sewer is one of them. And, but me, for example, as a plan, the, me that I'm inside the city of FAR, I see what it takes and the cost that it takes to maintain the quality of water and sewer that, that we have. And we just try to keep improving it, but it costs money. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're doing. So part of those $4.8 million that we are budgeted for next year includes already the issuance of debt that we just approved. Uh, and we're about to close actually in, by the end of September. And this is $13.8 million for water projects through Texas Water Development Board and for sewer, $18 million. Now, since we got loan forgiveness for each one of them, we actually got $4 million additional, like granted by the Texas Water Development Board uh, for the water projects and 1.6 for the sewer. So the total cost is actually 17 plus the $19 million in sewer. Yeah, so and Carla, I, I want to, yeah, I just want to make that clarification. We're not doing 13 million and 18 million in projects. We're doing 17 million and $20 million in projects. This is just, the previous slide was just what we had to allocate to fund the projects minus the loan forgiveness. Correct. So the total cost of the total investment that the city is going to do 
it's the 17 plus the 19 million dollars. Mm -hmm. But you know, the staff and and we, we try, we apply to the Texas Water Development Board to get some help and of course to reduce the debt and to make the debt service less. And we were, you know, we were lucky that we got uh, $5.6 million pretty much awarded. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, luck is a good word to use, but they look at also your financing, they look at your health of your city, right? That's what yes, they sir. do, right? The, yes, so sir. the better financial standings you have, the better award probability you're gonna get. Correct. And my understanding in, in speaking to their, their leadership was, this is a pretty big grant that they actually have ever done. It's pretty big, given the size of our city. And so um, I don't wanna minimize the fact that it's a great grant, but it's a reflection of the fact that you guys are balancing your books and you have a good credit rating that that was a major contributor to it for them believing in the fact that we could pay it back and that's why they give you such a good yes, grant. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah I think on the, on the $4 million one, if I remember correctly, it was somewhere between 11% and 30% loan forgiveness and we scored about a 28 or 29. Yep. So we, did, we did very well. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, again, this is a list of the projects. This is just a summary of the water projects that we have and Omar, and after my presentation, he's, he's gonna go more into details but this is just so that you can see what makes up the 17, 18 million dollars <coughs> in water projects. And this is the other 19.8 million dollars in sewer projects, including the lift station uh, replacement, oxidation beats repairs, and obviously yeah. upgrades. And so, so like the commissioner Carrillo said, uh, the south side is one of our bigger projects. That's the first one, the $6 million. That's gonna eliminate, I think, three lift stations and add about two miles of new sewer, sewer line. <coughs> Any questions so far about these projects? No? Okay. Oh, did you oh. Just, these, are these the ones, Omar? These are the ones PSJ is helping us with? Southwest is on the south. No, Southwest is doing the drainage and Trident's or Jefferson is doing the south. No, they're doing the reservoir. Yeah, they're doing the reservoir, that's correct. Yeah, we're building and hunt. Yeah. Good. But with all this that came in, it was so hard to even get them together. Right. So not only are you, not only are you guys providing uh, infrastructure for the city as necessary, you're actually providing education, real life education. Uh, for the students of the PhD school district. So just everybody know that there are partners in this. Yes, sir. Okay, so if there's no more questions, let's just move on to the Fire Event Center. Very, very, just very basic. Um, I guess Mr. Caballero, Dr. Caballero mentioned, you know, we're still kind of like with the assumption that the event center, it's going to keep operating and that life flows COVID will continue and eventually, you know, the event center will still have some events and concessions. But at the same time, since there was a reduction in the general fund and the general fund supports the event center, we want to leave the contribution the same. So in order for that to happen, we have to make some cuts in the expenses. So we're doing an overall reduction of 20% and their supplies, inventory, pretty much assuming that we're gonna have less events than last year. Wiley, any comments for the event center? Um, yeah, I mean, I know Commissioner Caballero had a question on this one, but I guess I wanna make sure we're not, we're all on the same page that just because things didn't happen this year, like parks programs, the event center was shut down, we still had expenses. They're not gonna be zero. We still have to pay staff, we have stuff that'll have the lights on, we still have to buy inventory and all that stuff, so there's still an expense there. Correct. And, and as a city, you're doing a lot of in-kind uh, assistance to school district and government agencies and yes, sir. Uh, so tech last stars, all these people that are coming through there indirectly also, either they're a partner or they're helping out the city of far mm -hmm. in other ways. Um, you use that event, the nonprofits as well, to use it for discounted rates, so there's mm -hmm. a lot of goodwill community stuff you're doing. Yes, sure. Yes, sir, so I think last count, Gary, where's Gary? He left. Oh, he left. Um, last count, I think I had him do a count in the last five years, we've 
done in kind uh, to school districts, to other nonprofit entities, using the event center, donations, stuff like that, we're over about two and a half million dollars. That we've done today. Mm -hmm. Which is which is good, good for the city. I mean, it costs us to run it. It's a it's a negative revenue stream for us, but it's goodwill towards the community and it promotes it promotes the city. Just in, in roadway infrastructure, when we had uh, we've had TxDOT, we've had some other uh, uh, FEMA and some other people come through. Well, we've had conferences also here with intergovernment relationships mm -hmm. meetings. All those feed into those kind of committees and funding. So to me, a two million dollar uh, sure. expenditure versus what you've achieved almost uh, five hundred million dollars in investment to the city of Far. It's yeah, it's well, a good return on investment. The interchange and the loop and everything else, just it pays off. So moving on, um, one of the other bonds and departments that the city has, of course, Tierra del Sol, our golf um, course. This one pretty much had no change also from last year to this year. Operations pretty much stayed the same. Um, we, all, we were only proposing a kind of a vacancy of a part-timer, which pretty much was being, was being vacant for like what, a year? Almost, yeah. So that's pretty much the only change. So we translate pretty much to a decrease in $42,000. Everything else stays the same. You know, this, the golf course is still, is still operating and we're still assuming the same budget. We're not increasing by anything and we're just decreasing that vacancy. So overall, 1.3 to $1.4 million is what it costs to run the golf course with a contribution from the city of Far of $529,000. Okay, this is the fun part, debt service. Um, if there's no more questions about the <coughs> particular funds, general fund, utility fund, I would like to go into like a summary of what the city um, has invested, but at the same time, like we were talking about with the water rates, you know, everything costs money. So the more projects, the more infrastructure, the more parks, the more everything that the city has, obviously everything has a cost. So the city has to incur debt in order to fund and to be able to afford those projects. So in a snapshot, by the end of 1920, the city would have an obligation of $159 million in debt. This includes pretty much short-term and long-term debt. And as you notice, I break it down into one to seven years and eight to 30 years, because the longest, the longer debt that we have is up to 30 years. That utility graph of $64.1 million includes the 18 and the $13 million that we just issued and for the projects that we just summarized for the water and the sewer. So that's already accounted there. Now, you're also physically responsible because, you know, um, we have to spend money to make money, and we, all companies have debt, but it's how much debt you, and or what you're paying for the debt service. What was the interest that you were able to obtain for those, uh, for those loans, for, for the those bonds? For the Texas Water Development Board, we actually got a point, an average of 0.2 percent. So 0.2 percent. Oh, yes, 0.2. So it's close to zero. So it was a very, very good deal. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. Um, so now, out of this 159 million dollars, I wanted to show you also, you know, how it's been. The majority has been allocated. So in the last five years, the city has issued to invest 112 million dollars, and those are the purposes. You know, those are the projects that have been accomplished with that debt. And like you, like you see, like I mentioned, it includes the, the revenue series 20A and 20B, which is the water and the sewer. It's included in there, because we're about to close already. But if you notice, you know, the, the fire station, the DRC, recreational center, communication center, parks, street repairs, again, everything costs money. And this is what we need to do in order to provide that to the citizens. So overall, all of that debt that we have because of these projects, 
on a yearly basis, we have to come up with this. We have to come up with $13.2 million average um, yearly to make the payments towards that debt. And I have the breakdown of who pays what. <coughs> so out of the $13.2 million, obviously property taxes is the main, uh, the main contributor, and that's the reason why we increased the property tax rate last year. We pretty much generated, because of that increase, uh, $2 million more compared to the year before. So, in, but that's specifically going towards the debt. The one point, uh, bridge contributes $1.2 million. PDC also is a contributor because they, they also have some debt. Paid in fees, we collect about a million dollars and pretty much everything is uh, committed that goes towards the repaving program that we have. This year we completed the fifth, the fifth year. 0.3%, um, which is about 300 and something thousand dollars in hotel taxes, like I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, towards the debt of the nature park. And the utility, which I just talked about, $4.8 million. So in total citywide, pretty much I have to get my, my magic wand and, you know, and, and make sure we separate and we put first $13.2 million to pay the debt. And, and our bridge always has to have debt, right? Correct. Correct. We, we always have to have debt. <coughs> because if you don't have debt, then you can't charge for the crossings. Is that right? That, my understanding, yes, because yeah. it, it's kind of like a business, so like yeah, the mayor yeah, mentioned. you have to keep, the, the, the bridge always has to have continue some type of debt. If not, then you cannot charge crossing, right? That's correct. So, but again, this is just so that you, you know, just like your mortgage payment, like, hey, okay, $13.2 million here. But it's generated and it's fully funded and it's budgeted for. It's accounted for, 100%. Um, for just to mention the tax increment reinvestment zone, start, uh, tiers one and two. This is just for you to have an idea to see how much it has grown. This is tiers number one. We've actually increased from last year to this year a 33% uh, increase in base value, which is pretty big. So based on the agreement that we have with the county and with the city, the tiers, it's estimated to collect $767,000 just for one year in 2021. Now, church number two, which is the Far Town Center, um, we got a 2% increase in base value. And like what we were talking about uh, with city manager is that was pretty much that, that center is completed. So I guess we didn't see as much increase as you know, as the other one, because it's pretty much done. But we're still collecting taxes out of it, and we're estimated to collect 669,000 from the city and from the county just for one year. So in oh, total- oh, Hold on, Carlos. So I just want to remind the community, so what this tells us, it's the projects that were slated to go have already gone. We've collected money from that. Now we move on to projects that haven't gone. We're gonna start concentrating on uh, Owasa and Jackson, uh, Expressway I-2, East and West, and uh, Sugar and Olana are gonna be the next, the next targets. Some of the open air we have to get developed. So with the combination of the two tours, pretty much we have a, or we're expecting to have by the end of 2021, $1.7 million accumulated in church number one and $1.8 million in church number two. And keep in mind that this has been only in place, what, three, 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 three to four years. So that's, that's the money that we have, I guess, available, mm -hmm. estimated for the next fiscal year. Any questions? <clears throat> no? My next slide, oh no, not this one, the other one. But okay, this is just like a summary of summaries. This is pretty much so that you can have an idea of how much it takes, it costs the city to operate only in operations. This is excluding completely construction projects, infrastructures. This is just how much it takes for the city pretty much to run. Um, so, I mean, we're talking about that we manage $100 million excluding capital projects. So, big responsibility.
responsibility. But it's fun. Now, important facts to remember, I guess, for this next year budget. Um, like I mentioned, I was talking about the debt and how much we have to come up to pay the, the debt service. This year's $13 million. That's what we're averaging every year. At this point, with the current tax rate that we have, we're pretty much maximized. So in other words, the tax rate increase that we did last year covers future debt. We have one more set of uh, debt that we have uh, that we projected for next year, an additional $19 million. It's already accounted for, it's budgeted for, we just haven't issued those bonds. But after that issuance of debt, we're pretty much uh, at the limit. We don't forget that we're also increasing the, or projecting an increase in health insurance claims for 5%. A point that I hadn't made at the beginning, but I guess I wanna point out is that collective bargaining, uh, it's not accounted in this proposed scenario. So I, I don't know if we're gonna talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk that. about it. Yes, general. but just so that you will inform that um, none of that was accounted in this. So the $55 million uh, proposed balanced budget that it's in the general fund does not include collective bargaining increases. So the, well, the collective bargaining we addressed with both uh, entities, the fire and the police, at least I did personally. Uh, I told them that uh, since the majority of our revenue to offset their costs comes from the bridge, and we had the uh, closure of the bridge, which impacted our finances. They know this already. They've been uh, very understanding and uh, team players, and they understand that we, we got impacted financially. I told them they're, they're at, the, at the present time, when we last time we met with them, I say, no, it's, 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 it's difficult for us to offer you any revenues increases when we don't have that money. And they knew up front that what we were talking about. So once we, uh, the normal kicks back in, because that is our uh, money generator, then it's only appropriate for us to sit down and uh, discuss making up the difference. But they understand. The last I talked to them, I haven't spoken to them recently. The reason we had not been able to move forward and obviously that we're gonna, we'll come through when things uh, normalize. Come back to normal? Yeah. Yes, sir. And I guess the, la the last point that I, just to remind you all that the proposed cuts are only vacancies no people were actually laid off. So that's just something for you to, you know, just keep in mind that when we say cut, we're not getting rid of anybody. <clears throat> this one, this slide is the one that I was talking about. This one is only just for you to see how much um, additional revenue the city can generate in the scenario that the commission decides to increase the tax rate. So right now we're at 71, 76 cents. So if we raise it up by one cent, it'll give us 1.2 approximately million dollars a year, which can be used either for operations in the general fund on a yearly basis or to issue debt. So I have, here, I'm just showing here the scenarios as to how much it will give us additional, like property tax additional revenue per year, and how much it would translate into new debt in the case that the city is in need of more projects and we need to come up with more, more funding. Again, my job is to kind of like give you options as to if there's any plans, if there's any funding needed, this is the way we do it. The, six, the 7492 uh, cent rate, I don't know if you remember, and I mentioned at the beginning last year, and that's also the reason, one of the reasons why we raised uh, property taxes, is that now we have limited the increase in the tax rate, so now we can only increase it up to 3.5%. Before it used to be 8%. Now we can only raise it up to 3.5. So that 0 0.7492 cent tax rate that we have, it's pretty much up to the limit <coughs> that we can increase the tax rate without going to the voters' approval. So the city has the liberty pretty much to go up to that and get an additional $1.6 million a year, either for operations or to issue $22 million in debt. And again, this is just for you to get an idea and to have that scenario and to have that option as to what it would take 
to come up with that much revenue on a yearly basis. And that's it. Any questions? Hablen ahora o callen para siempre. So one, one comment. We're not, at least I'm not, and I, I think I, the commission may disagree, but I don't think so. Uh, we're not interested in raising taxes. We don't have a need to raise taxes. We're doing very well, actually. <clears throat> and uh, I think uh, all the investment we've done is going to start, as it, as it is already, if you look at the tourists, you're going to start seeing more <coughs> revenue come in. More, and uh, the optimization that occurred on the bridge because of Luis and Fred and, and Freddie and, and what they're doing at the bridge and uh, Eddie with the, the accounting, you're going to see uh, it's a much more streamlined process that's happening, so we'll see revenues going up there as well. And so there's uh, uh, unaccounted revenues that, that have been, haven't been quite forecasted, Correct. I understand that, but I think uh, what, what I'm seeing in the big picture when I look at the, the balance sheets and the cash flows that are coming through, I think, uh, I, I know we don't need to raise taxes, and second of all, as a matter of fact, we're interested in in the next 12 months looking at it, it's actually going back if need be, if our cash flows are what they, I think they're going to be, we want to be able to go back if possible. So um, I don't know if the, the commission has a different opinion, but that's the, the way I saw it. It was a temporary move until the housing and everything caught up and, looks, and then, you know, it's unfortunate we got hit by COVID-19, right? But regardless, it looks like it, it's coming around. Yes. And so uh, the housing market hasn't slowed either. And I think our sales tax have remained relatively stable. So I, I'm very optimistic that uh, we're likely next year, probably 12 months from now, that we'll be able to address the taxes again. Yes, no, and just for clarification, I guess this, this slide, we're not even proposing to raise taxes. This is just to give you uh, an idea on how much it would generate in the case that you're even considering. But we're not proposing increasing tax rates at all. Great. Just, just, in, case we wanna, just in case we want to give you more money so you can have it. <laughs> what? Just in case you can have more money. For so my raise. Sir. Yes. Sure. Having a kitty. <laughs> okay, so if you have no further questions, then I'm done with my presentation. And I hope I didn't bore you to death. And I hope it made sense. And thank you very much. And we look forward to balancing and adopting the budget. Wonderful. Thank you. Great thank Carlos. you. Yes, sir. So we're going to get into uh, capital outlay. Capital outlay shouldn't be, shouldn't be too long. Omar? Omar, Omar, oh. pick it up a little bit. Just Can't raise it up. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. There you go. So the outline of this uh, presentation will go over some of the transportation projects we have, parks and rec projects, facility improvements throughout the city, public utilities, and some proposed drainage improvements. Uh, so let's first talk about what we have under construction right now. These are some of the major projects we have under construction. We started the uh, first floor renovations that just kicked off. And so as you can see, it's just started. So it's about 4.6% 4 complete. And time-wise, it used about 7.5% of the time. And I'll talk about a little bit about that discrepancy, why it's a little bit off. Uh, the FY15, the northbound, that's the 
the second BSAF and the northbound expansion lanes. That one still hasn't kicked off because we're going through the security clearances with the government. They have a pretty uh, rigorous, invest, you know, FBI gets involved in checking all the backgrounds of all the employees. So that's, we're anticipating by this month to actually, you know, break ground on that project. We've got the aquatic facility. It's about 36% complete. Contract time use is about 50%. The hike and bike utility relocation phase two, that's the one off of Ridge Road, that's coming to a completion, should be done in about two weeks. The railroad crossings, this is a yearly thing we try to do. We have about, we've completed all the railroad crossings on the west side from Cage to Sugar. These are those wooden crossings where, you know, we're converting them into concrete planks. And so now we're working on the east side. So the next one that we've got scheduled is Dogwood. That one's in pretty bad shape. Uh, so we're at the mercy of the railroad company. Uh, it's uh, kind of on their schedule. And so we try to schedule them um, as many as we can every year. Uh, the citywide uh, ditch winding project, this is the one we recently awarded. And they're just, they got started uh, yesterday, Monday. So this is a 90-day contract. So they should be done by the, you know, by the fall. And then lastly, this is the bridge office expansion phase two. This is the one we're about to advertise. This is the renovations of the, the bridge offices kind of phase two. And just to kind of give you a little breakdown of how construction usually operates, typically you would think it's a straight line, you know, uh, construction time versus cost. But typically, it's like an S curve. You start construction. I don't know if this cuts a pointer, but usually, you're, you start, it's like an S-curve, so your costs aren't as much. Your costs aren't as much when you get started. And so you'll see a gap between the contract time and how much they spend. So that's why you see a discrepancy at the beginning. It starts catching up in the middle. That's where your construction cost versus your construction time should equal out. And then at the end, it also tails off. So this is generally, when you see a discrepancy, the contractors only build us 20%, but they've used 50% of the time. It's usually because it's operating in this, in this mm. scenario. So it's, it's not a linear uh, equation. It's like an S-curve. And then, so these are the projects we currently have under design. Under transportation, we have the Tri-City Pedestrian Safety Improvement Project. This is the phase one of the PSJ sidewalks. We've got 100% uh, plans complete. Yes, sir? Essentially, the FAR. The FAR, FAR, the FAR. Yeah, this is the FAR. <laughs> Uh, Tri-City pedestrian. We're taking the lead. That's correct. We're taking the lead on this project, and we've completed the plans. Uh, Textile finally, you know, gave us a comment, so we're finalizing that. Environmental's been complete, so we're looking to bid this project out. You know, yeah, the only reason it's got PSJ in it is because number one, when uh, uh, the previous administration under Dr. King, we uh, we allowed them to pick where we're going to put the sidewalks. Correct. Right. We wanted them to be uh, uh, take care of their children. But uh, we're all three cities chipped in, far leading the charge to make yes. sure we got the project to the MPO and making sure the PHA students are taken care of from the sidewalk perspective. Definitely. But they're the ones choosing the locations. Yes, they, they chose the locations, and then each city got to choose additional sidewalks as yeah. well. And then we got the far pedestrian connections. These are some uh, an LRDVDC grant we got. These are some sidewalks that are going to go along Jackson, Cage, and Veterans. So this mm -hmm. is more for filling in the gaps of where we have uh, yes. missing sidewalks. We got the Highline Roadway Improvement. This is East Highline from, from Cage to Veterans. Our plans are 95% complete. Texas started the environmental, so we should be moving forward on this project this coming fiscal year. The, the environmentals are completed? We turned, it's under review by TxDOT. Our consultants completed the environmental and turned it over to TxDOT. Yeah, because that's what usually takes the longest, right, the environmental? Yes. And then once they complete the environmental, we can acquire the right-of-way. So it, it's not that many tracks. They're la large tracks, so we're looking at about maybe six large tracks of right-of-way. Um, and then we have, these are the ones we're rebidding. These are the, the Bowler Farms parking lot, uh, the overflow, one by City Hall, uh, a Dr. Long parking lot, these are 100% complete. We're going to be rebidding these out to you know, a more green, more sustainable type of parking lot. And then we got the reconstruction of Lagarto Alley. This is a, a Lagarto uh, an alley that was in pretty bad shape. It floods, so we did some plans for that. And then First Street, this is, this is First Street. This is the, the project we completed plans. We're, right now, the, the current street just goes up to this point. The right-of-way is already in place in here. 
there is some, we are going to have to purchase a portion of it from the irrigation district because they have an easement. But to fully fund this uh, project is about 300000 And this will alleviate any traffic flow due to the uh, congestion we're going to get from the interchange project. So you have a, a relief route in here. Next, uh, another project that's been completed, but you know this was something that was started about a year ago, is the Jones Box Phase Three Amphitheater, and this is this kind. Of, this is looking at the area on the west side. You know, we, we plan to do uh, a trail parking lot and amphitheater, and we are having a splash pad in this area. So that's fully designed and complete. These are just some renderings. Next, let's talk about facilities. These are facilities that are 100% complete from a design standpoint. Fire station number one, we had started that project about a year and a half ago. You know, the architects finished up the plants, and so right now they're shovel ready. There is some land issues that we need to, um, you know, back to previous administration, they donated some land to the county where we proposed to put this uh, fire station, and now we want to get it back. Fire station number one, which is that one? That's this is off of Knights Drive on the north side, 495. Okay. And so we do have a, a, a piece of land there that we want to propose the fire station. You know, we thought about rehabbing the existing one, but for the same amount of price, or for a little bit more, you can get a new one, and it's, you know, more, you know, up to date. Up to what are you going to do with the old facility then? So the old facility, Mayor, I don't know if you remember, um, uh, when y'all first came into office, <clears throat> they were working with the volunteers to make a fireman's park there in the corner. Oh, that's right. They were going to use right. some of that. So yes. we were going to look at using okay. it as a, as a barbecue house and fireman's right. park. That's just real bad drainage over there. Sewage is over there, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it backs up sometimes. So what we did, um, now that we hired a consultant for Palo Verde, the subdivision that y'all gave us authority last mm -hmm. meeting, we're going to dovetail that station into that study, too. We can find out exactly what's going on. Okay. Great. We got the Parks Maintenance Building. This is a, a project that we're going to be locating there off of Hall Acres at our old recycling center. Uh, this is a, a new facility that's going to help with all the parks maintenance staff to have a, a staging area where they come in and check in. Yeah, you have about a, what is it, 30, 40 years old, Sergio? The building? It's got one bathroom and it houses about 50 to 60 guys over there. They're pretty, pretty packed in there. <laughs> and then uh, citywide HVAC replacement and controls phase two. This will kind of, we're going to wait. You know, we have some consultants doing a citywide building assessment, looking at all our ACs and stuff. We've done, last year we did the PD and library. We didn't get to do <coughs> golf, bridge. And so the idea is to optimize our buildings with controls, smart controls, to be able to lower the temperature at, when you're not using it. and and optimize this. So this is a phase two. I believe we're going to wait till the results of this building assessment to see if uh, we need to uh, move forward with this. Sure. And then the Northside Community Center or Event Center. This is uh, this is the project location off of Nolana. This is a, a new project endeavor we're looking at. Um, is, it, is it EDA grant on it? EDA. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got. Um, I believe it was uh, four million dollars in EDA money. And the rest of it is going to be three and a half of, of city funds. So is this the one next to the golf? I mean, the the soccer place? Soccer place. Yes, sir. Correct. Next to Golasso. I'm not Golasso. Um, I think Plaza it was Sports Center. Didn't you get five? Five million from? From EDA. From EDA. I thought it was is, four. Is EDA, you know, it's, the, it's the Lucio deal, isn't it? Isn't this the Lucio funding? No, this is the, I believe it was EDA funding. I'm not sure there's a, additional money coming in. I know yeah, so. because I think uh, one of the things we, uh, I know, I know this is, uh, yeah. So this is the one, uh, Senator Lucio, when uh, on last session, he was able to help us acquire a $5 million grant sure. to help us offset this cost. Yeah, sure. this, and yeah this, this is it. This is the yeah. one we, okay. had to, we had to fast track it to get to meet the grant obligations by January. Yes, we have to make that. Yeah, sure. So these are just some preliminary renderings of this. There's also a garden and amphitheater. So it's a, it's a you know, this is the area, as you come in, there's going to be some uh, scenic type of garden, an amphitheater, and then the building. So it's, it's a good layout, and I'm looking forward to that project. Uh, some of the 
we're going to talk about the bridge projects. I know Carla talked about some of these already. This is the FY16 DAP project. This is the one we're finally closing on the, the agreements, the DA, the donations acceptance agreement that the government's finally completing. This is overall, you combine those three projects, the dock one, the dry dock, the cold dock, and the ag lab, it's about 29 million. Out of that, our contribution is 13 million, and Fed and state is 16 million. So we're getting about 16 million dollars in grant money. We got the truck staging area. That one just kicked off uh, last month. We we agreed on the layout, and so we're working on the design on the <coughs> truck staging area. Our contribution to that is 3.5, and we're getting 4 million from TechStop. And then lastly, the CT pad lane. This is a new project we just kicked off probably in June with some consultants, and we'll get into that. This is uh, to bring in some uh, CT pad certified trucks through uh, our existing lanes here that th these aren't being used. So the idea is to utilize this infrastructure to, to come in through here and push these, these trucks out to the new, the new mm -hmm. BCF. So we should be wrapping up this project from a standpoint of design at the end of the month, and then either we go out for bids or work Good. with the existing contractors on this project. <clears throat> and then see, these are potential projects for 2020, 2021. These aren't projects that haven't been designed, but could be something to consider. On the transportation side, we got three projects. We got Raiders Drive, South Sugar Road, and Ramos Street. And we'll go then through each one of these. And these are the costs. You're looking at about $800,000 for Raiders Drive extension, about $1.2 million for South Sugar Road, and Ramos Street looking at about $250,000. So first, this is the road construction for Raiders Drive. As you can see, we have this right-of-way in here, and this will connect from, uh, I believe it's Nolana? Eldora. Eldora, Eldora to <coughs> Sioux Road. It's just uh, another north-south a connector. South Sugar Road, this is over here from Highline to Military. I think, I think that's one of the roads that will live, would help us take the trucks away from Jackson Road so that they don't go by that school. And they go through, through that road and, and alleviate the problem that we're having with all those trucks going from Jackson. <clears throat> and then lastly, this is, this is a roadway that we have the right-of-way, and back when this subdivision was built, the road was never built. So what you see in green and yellow is, is right-of-way that's in place, but the road never got built out. So I know we have some residents that live in here that have to travel through a dirt road, and it's, a, really? and it's an actual street right-of-way, a city of far right-of-way. So this is a project we're looking at completing, you know, building this road. Yeah, those residents have been complaining since we got elected four years ago. And so we also have the right of way here to punch out to Hall Laker. So all this, real, technically we can build a road. And so this is about 250,000. Is that just county standards or are you doing curb and gutter? What are you doing? Yeah, we're looking at doing curb and gutter because there's already some inlets and storm drainage system, so we would do a, a curb and gutter with the inlet wow. system in here. That's good. 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 And then facility improvements. These are some of the projects we're looking at. The gun range, I yeah. think we're looking to scale that back uh, and build just what match what's existing to the new area with the intention of in the future be able to build it out to how we want the full gun range to be. I think that's the idea, given the funding. Um, we talked, I know there's been discussions that the old Texan Hotel is up for sale. Um, that's the one there by downtown. So that's a budget about 900000 And then 80 acres of land purchase on Owasa Road, about $13 million. So this is, these are just some of the potential ideas yeah. for <coughs> next year. The gun range, uh, Chief, have you been brought up to speed on the gun range? Yeah, well, I guess we've got to talk because uh, we're going to, essentially we're going to use, um, tap your, your uh, revenue stream uh, to help fund that. And I guess we need to revisit that to see how that can work out instead of it being on the city ledger, remember? I like the idea. Yeah. But the, the old Texan hotel, wouldn't that be an EDC purchase? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same one. We, 
I mean, we, we fund it. Yeah, it, it can be either one. I mean, EDC, it ultimately will go to EDC if we're going to send it out or, or sell it to the end user. Uh, but the city usually takes the lead on buying it. We have more more power than EDC to protect a dam and stuff like that. More, more, more resources. Yeah. But we just brought these up because these are areas <coughs> that we had talked about <coughs> that's in the next phase of development. So we're looking at having to control them, get them developed, and then send them to the end user. So Barrera's finally selling that? <laughs> yeah. He's willing to sure. He's willing to sell this great? Hmm? Yeah, but no, that. <laughs> and that's already got a revenue. Uh, you just got to give me the green light. Right. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> and then we'll talk a little bit more in detail. These are the utility projects, the ones we just got the, the loans for. On the water side, we got a transmission line that goes from the Expressway 83 tank to Eldora tank. And then we're going to rehab the Expressway 83 tank rehab. That's already, we got the green light from the Texas Water Development Board. That's, we're going to paint it, repaint it, put a new logo, whatnot. So there is some, some uh, upgrades we're going to be That's doing. That's the only one that was pending, right? Why yes. Yeah. But we already have the design. All the, the other logos, three are done. Right? It's just Expressway tank is the only, the last one that needs to be rehabbed. Yeah, but we had already chosen the logos and everything. I remember. Right. Okay. And then the raw water reservoir expansion, that's the, the one we purchased for about $5 million. Construction is about 2.25. We got the raw, raw water reservoir dredging. That's the existing reservoir. So once we built the new reservoir, we have to go back and clean up the old one. So over time, things settle, so you lose capacity in that mm -hmm. reservoir. So we'll be redredging that one once we, we get that going. So we already have a place for the next reservoir? Yes, and yeah. I'll, go, I'll yeah. go into detail okay. on that. And then these are the water treatment plant. As you mentioned, the water treatment plant right now has a capacity of 19 million gallons per day. Our average is around eight. So we have about 60% of excess capacity. We do have the capacity, but there is some TLC that needs to happen there at the plant, upgrades to some equipment. So mm -hmm. from a capacity standpoint, we're good to about 2040. We won't need to upgrade the plant, but there is some uh, rehab we need to do. We're not going to be here anyway. <laughs> 2030, 2040. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so this is our first project, the transmission line. Here's the Expressway 83 tank, and here's the door. So we're putting a dedicated transmission line to supply water to this tank. So all these will be interconnected. It gives you better flow, better pressure. So the aqua line, is that what you're talking about? Excuse me? The aqua color line? Yes, aqua line. This will be a new line that will be <coughs> running directly to the tank. It, it might not take this final alignment, but this is just a general idea of right. what, what's going to happen there. And this is Eldora tank, LBJ tank, and Expressway. And so this is a tank we're going to be doing a, a rehabilitation. <coughs> This is the reservoir. This is the, this is the existing reservoir. We purchased this land. Could you just put orient, orient him to the streets and stuff so you understand? Aquita Ridge Road. This is the HEB cages somewhere on yes. this side. And so uh, we purchased this property. And so it's right next to the existing. So that works in our favor because we'll have some redundancy. So we'll build this new one. <coughs> we'll put all the water in here, empty this one out, and get back the capacity. We'll dredge this this uh, reservoir back and then we'll have this is a 70 million gallon <coughs> and we're going to build an identical 70 million gallon tank so that's approximately 10 to 12 days of storage so if there was no water coming in we'd have about two weeks of storage of water that we can supply the residents that's good so it gives us uh, that uh, flexibility which we don't ever want to test it yeah we don't want to be we never want to get in that situation but <laughs> if we do we have that capacity now, briefly, just I don't know if you know this, but if not, Wiley, what are we doing with the front property facing Ridge? Yes, that's going to be we're going to be developing this or or subdividing it to provide a commercial development. That's, or that's EDC property to be EDC property. Okay. Good. So now let's get into the sewer projects or wastewater projects. Uh, like we mentioned, we broke it up into three parts of the city, the south region interceptor, the, north, the northwest interceptor, and the central inter interceptor. And then we have some upgrades to the, the wastewater treatment plant. On the wastewater treatment plant, our capacity is 8 MGD, and we're treating about 5, so we have about 40% excess capacity. So that one is a, not as much capacity as the water, so we're looking at maybe 10 15 years before we need to start thinking about uh, 
getting more capacity on the wastewater side. And so let's look at the, what we're doing at, in the north. Is these in green are lift stations we're going to be eliminating and converting it to a gravity system. This is Nolana. This is the Rudy's, the hotel area. So we're going to be re-diverting this flow in this direction and eliminating this lift station. Like this lift station is so close to a residential area that it gives us problems to get in. The force main you know, might be going under the house. So it gives us uh, a relief from a liability standpoint of making this a gravity system and not having to have a lift station in back of someone's house, you know, going in there and dealing with these lift stations. And so we'll be running this main all the way down Eldora and coming down. And this is an existing 30-inch sanitary sewer system. We have plenty of capacity to bring this flow down to this, this area. So, like you mentioned, each lift station that you eliminate, that's about 100, 200,000 in maintenance a year from odors, chemicals, you know, UB electricity. So this is going to be a. So a, those are two lift stations right there. That are going away. Right. Yes, these Good. two. And so it'll just be naturally flowing through gravity. In the central area, we're eliminating this lift station. This is Juarez. This is the station number one. We're going to be going uh, gravity down Juarez Street. To Kung Pao, this is a big line, a 36-inch line that we're going to be uh, tapping into. So this is the improvements in the central area. So we'll be eliminating this list station. And then in the south, we have, <coughs> we have this list station, list station number 30. This is on Dicker Road. Uh, this is a pretty old list station, and it's a very hazardous, uh, from a safety standpoint, what happens when it rains, the water gets in, so you manually have to shut down the power because it could be a, an electrical hazard. So what we're doing is we're building a, a brand new lift station right next to it, decommissioning it, and we're going to build a force main that's going to be pumping to this location on Thomas. And that's going to relieve this lift station of all this flow, and right now, you know how we have problems of overflows whenever power goes out, the lift station fills up, it can't pump, and so you know, it backs up into the street. So this project in itself is going to alleviate a lot of issues in the... So in that, that, the lift station down here, was that serving all that area yes. before? Yes, this lift to, station to is actually serving all of South Far. Also, okay. wow. Even, so we're going to be taking a lot of load off of this lift station. Uh, and hmm. to give you a perspective, this lift station is essentially just a small manhole with pumps. And so if it's serving all of South Far, can you imagine this? These pumps are on 24-7. And so doing this project, you're going to take out some of that flow, send it out here. What is that road? The, the one? This is no, no. Thomas, no, and this down. is Dicker. He's uh, up and down. Dicker? No, yes. That's yeah, Dicker. Dicker. Yeah, quita el DRC, so we're built, we have the land. No, so that cage, no, the iRoad. And then the other component, as Mr. Whitey said, is we got this, this is a uh, Dicker. We're going to be extending a, a 36 inch sewer line down Dicker Road. I road. I road. I mean, I road. this is I road, correct. I road. And then coming down Anaya. And then also in here. This is Highline. So we're going to be eliminating this lift station and this lift station. So we're eliminating two lift stations building a deep gravity system to expand our ETJ. This will be deep enough to allow to serve all this ETJ area. So that's going to take all these lift stations that you see, one, two, three lift stations that would dump up here. They're now going to dump to this system. So we're, elimin we're relieving that lift station furthermore of all that flow. So that's going to, like I said, that's going to help out this area from a standpoint of overflows. Yes, sir. And also, Mayor Commissioners, um, the line that's in green coming down I Road has already been fast-tracked. We've pulled it out so we can get that done first to open up some potential development in the ETJ. Okay. Yeah. Omar, are you up by, uh, by Highline or Naya? I'm not sure where, where Beto Campero's business is at. He's on there's Naya. A, there's, there's usually water coming out of there when, it's, when it rains. On the storm drain or the yeah storage? the storm drain. This is not going to be addressing that issue. With this well, is no, that, that storm. This is this is sewer. This is sewer. So it's solely okay. 
so it's not going to well, address that. I, have, I haven't heard about that, but <coughs> we'll look into it. I know that that, that system along Anaya Road is um, was undersized for the area. That's why when they did that subdivision just south and a little bit west of them, the PDC subdivision, they put two big um, detention ponds there because that system was too small. It was cost prohibitive at that time because that road was built like a dang airport, like a runway. It's like 11 inches of concrete to get underneath to get to that storm storm system. So, but we'll look into it either way. I hadn't, I hadn't heard that it overflowed. Yeah, I we'll showed it. I showed it to somebody one time because it was. They called me. It was flooded. The Lord, but it, was, it, was it, it was. But it wasn't sewer. It, it wasn't was, sewer. It was water. Hmm. He called me about the the detention there in the EDC that it's filthy. We just got something we need to try to look at to get addressed. I know we're cleaning out the, our our detention ditches. All, all our ditches. Hmm? All our ditches. Yeah, but the one that's right there at the at the EDC, there on uh, what is it, Anaya and International is that what? Is that this, is it International? Oh, the EDC subdivision. Yeah, the EDC subdivision. That that, that 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 ditch is like really bad. Whose ditch is that? That's ours. Yeah, it? it's in the right of way. It's like a detention for our, mm -hmm. for the EDC, for the uh, subdivision itself. For that subdivision. That's yeah. how they did it. We'll, we'll find out. So why, why would that be ours? Is that they would have to have uh, created it when they well, made the subdivision, no? Well, it was created did. with a subdivision, but it was created within the street right away and dedicated as a drainage pond to the public. So ah. all, all the businesses go mm -hmm. to like a canal. Got it. You got that, Ida? That's going to fall under you. Okay. Well, we'll find out if it needs. And then lastly, you know, we'll be talking about proposed drainage improvements. I know we had a, a workshop or a, a little presentation by a consultant, so that, that'll be completed at the end of the month, detailing in detail costs, types of projects, what kind of uh, benefits we'll be getting, a detailed breakdown. And the, the areas we would be considering is the Dicker and Veterans area and possibly Sugar and Negley. Those are the two priority from a drainage standpoint. And we should be having a final tabulation, like I said, by the end of the month of a cost okay. for all these. And that's the end of my presentation. If there's any Great. questions. Thank you, Omar. Thank you. Good job. Uh, good job, Omar. <laughs> Mayor, City Commission, any questions on anything you've been presented to this morning? No, you know. Yeah. You guys? I'm good. I think we're all answered. So you guys far. good? What? Any questions, yeah. concerns? We're playing musical chairs or what for a cake? No. Today is the fifth year anniversary with the city. So Who? Patricia. Patricia. Five years, she says. Years. I don't remember it. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can't want it. Yeah, feels like twenty. <laughs> feels like twenty. Yeah, one, <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> that means you got to share it. You can't take it home. Y la dieta? I remember y'all. I remember y'all said she wouldn't make it past two, but Is it I thought it was wrong. Yeah, two months. We said. Yeah. Two months. I'll share. I'll so if there's no other questions, um, we can go into executive session, Mayor. Do we have, we'll have lunch over there, and then we'll, we'll talk we about have anything? That. Is there something in executive session? Of um, some, if y'all traditionally it's the bridge. The bridge. Something about. Um, about there's something you want to talk about the bridge? Collective bargaining. No, if y'all need anything else, we can done right now. We can't do collective bargaining to with money. The bridge is the only one. If there's anything. Yeah, no? so what, what we did, Mayor, commissioners, uh, for the bridge, we did vet uh, Luis's projects. For the most part, Mayor, commissioners, the property itself is already going to be built out. We have plans for to use 100% of the property that's there to include the second span. Uh, right now, it's going to be more of next couple of years is marketing the bridge, retain our customers, and bringing them back. Yeah. So it's pretty simple. Yeah, I think the only thing we're going to, I don't think it needs to be, needs to be an executive session is the, uh, where's Luis? Uh -huh. Where'd he go? Can you get up there real quick? Sure. There's only one real item we've got to talk about. <laughs> so we're going to make sure the public is aware oh, yeah. of. Luis, pick up this one. I mean, we're, no, we already we spoke of the, uh, no, not yet. the investment, the magnitude Testing. of investment we've done. We already spoke about that in the projects and where they are time-wise, but this expansion. Sure. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Because I mean, it's, it's, it needs to be public information also. It's Absolutely. Not so for the record, my name is Luis Bassan. I'm the bridge director uh, for the city of FAR. So one of the priority projects that came into existence uh, 
middle of last year, around this time period last year, June, July time frame, was the expansion of the bridge. My understanding is five years in, when the bridge was built back in 1994 and we started operations in November of 19, 1994, five years in, we were supposed to do a second span, which consisted of five additional lane, uh, four additional lanes. So what this project consists of is, again, four additional lanes spanning from Mexico to the U.S. or U.S. to Mexico, whichever way you want to see it, and it's 3.2 miles in length. So this will give us added capacity on this bridge. And what it'll do is it'll allow us to completely separate different types of traffic. So currently, with the four lanes that we have, we've been able to dedicate specific lanes for uh, fast certified cargo, for regular cargo, for empties, and even for car traffic. Now, the mayor pointed at something earlier, which was about the immigration problem we had back in 2019. So we were able to start prioritizing trade even more, giving us 40% more capacity inside the import lot because we're using a car lane to cross all the northbound empties. Mm -hmm. That being said, with the project, the way it is right now, we started with Mexico. The reason why we started with Mexico last year, October, November timeframe, with the engineers in Mexico was because uh, Mexico has been known in the last three or four years to advance projects and get things off the ground, get to construction, and get them done in record time. The aduana in Reynosa that connects to the Far Bridge is a perfect example. It's a project that went from 2000, March 2017 to October 2018. $90 million that were put into that aduana. Never did we, did we skip a beat. We always continued the operations and we continued to move traffic forward. So taking those notes and having a base group at the federal level in Mexico with your federal entities, we decided that that was the best shot for us. So we started with the, with the uh, again, with the uh, uh, surveying, with the studies in Mexico, October, November timeframe. We're approaching phase three in Mexico. Back in January of this year, we started phase one with the US engineers. So right now, we're at that point where they're talking to each other and we have to come to an agreement on the design. Now, the good thing is that the engineers that built the bridge or designed the bridge and built it back in 1994 are the same engineers that are doing it this time around. And it's the same folks that were there. So at the end of the day, where we stand right now with the bridge is we're getting into the preliminary designs in Mexico, and uh, we have the support from the, what we call in Spanish, el Grupo Base in Mexico. Also, because one of the things that we're trying to shoot for in Mexico is to get the funding for it. So there's a federal entity, it's a federal public works bank called Banobras, and uh, they are going to be the ones to fund the project. As a matter of fact, yesterday we had another touch base meeting with the folks in Mexico, SST being the counterpart for FHWA on the US side, is in full support. The foreign minister of Mexico, SARE, all the federal entities are in full support of this project, and the next step is to get us to funding. So that is where we stand right now, because on the US side, one of the things that we need to do is we need to have an amendment presidential permit. What does that mean? It means that basically, if we don't have that, we can't construct another, another span. So as of last week, we discovered some, somewhat of a loophole. Why? Because we found out that a presidential permit was just awarded just recently, and it was awarded in record time from the time they submitted the application back in March to June of 2020, and we said to ourselves, well, are we missing something? Are we missing anything? Um, are we doing the right thing? Do we have the right people on board? And in getting in contact with the folks and having this, this kind of emergency meeting, we discovered that we could probably pave our own way. In other words, there is no process right now. Why? Because as of April of 2019, the federal government, U.S. government, decided to put an executive order on behalf of the president indicating that all presidential permits, whether it be an amendment or a brand new presidential permit, has to go through the office of the president. In other words, it's not going to go through the Department of State. It's not going to go through some of the other federal agencies like GSA and all those. It's going to go directly through the president's office. So right now, we've kind of got our marching orders. I know that the mayor was able to attend this meeting as well. And where we stand is we're going to kind of reposition ourselves, re-strategize to get us to the application process for that presidential permit from here to the end of this year, uh, not fiscal year, but end of calendar year, to hopefully get us that application beginning of 2021 and hopefully get us that, that amendment 
uh, way, way before we had scheduled, which was June of 2021. So that's where we stand right now. I mean, it's become a priority project. Aside from all the DAP projects that everybody already heard about, uh, that is our number one priority right now. Why? Because we are growing. Regardless of COVID, regardless of the immigration crisis, regardless of any other things that come our way, we are growing. If you look at our numbers, I mean, we have been poised to grow from 4 to 5% yearly, both imports and exports. Unfortunately, COVID-19 really did a number on us. Back in April, for example, we were estimating we were going to lose about 35 to 40% of our truck traffic. We only lost 13%. So then came May. We estimated about half of that. We only lost 7%. And then came June, and our numbers spiked up to 13%, both inbound and outbound. So what does that mean? That now in July, our numbers actually, regardless of what happened with the blockade in Mexico and the farmer strike, we still came out on top. 4.40%. So when you take into consideration where we're at right now in August, and we're over at, by the 10th of August, we're at about 1,000 trucks over from where we were last year, that's a good indicator. It's a good indicator for the future because, again, trade continues. And even though Maquila operations and some other essential businesses in Mexico are running at maybe 50 to 60% capacity right now or are on standby because of COVID, you know, the growth and the numbers speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's where we stand. Yeah. So, the, so the, at the end of the day, we plan to have our application done by the end of this month, and we're going to submit in September. That's what we're going to do. What, that what, is the plan. Well, what's the cost of the, the bridge? W once you calculate everything that we're putting into it, you're looking at about $100 million. Anywhere from 80 to $100 million, both sides. Yeah. Can we get that signed before the president's election? <laughs> Well, that's why we had that meeting well, just, just on Friday. Well, sir, know, Biden is going to sign it. Obviously, is we're, we're on commercial. Side side? We're one of the only commercials, <laughs> are the only commercial right now. Correct. President Biden what will sign it. What does it look like Donna or El Sanduos ever getting that possibility? Or well, it's like anything. Kind of you know, when the federal government, and I'm speaking of CBP, when CBP introduced the DAP program or the Donations Acceptance Program, it was intended to allow all these other bridges to get the infrastructure they needed because there was a study done on behalf of the federal government indicating that it would take the federal government up to 15, 20 years to, to enhance the infrastructure of the land ports of entry. So guess what? We were the first bridge to submit projects and that were approved back in 2014 and in 2015, 2016, and then everybody else kind of jumped on board. So, but everybody's still in the mix. There's projects, but there's really, uh, there's really no timelines right now. For, for those set projects. We won't talk about them. Let them talk about themselves. And don't, don't, don't share a trade secret, sir. <laughs> so that's where we stand. I mean, we're just looking forward to the future. I know that the numbers were shared, and there is a bit of a, you know, of a decrease mm -hmm. for this fiscal year. But according to our calculations, we'll probably come out a little bit on top of that. Great. And we're doing good. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Luis. All, all the cities that you mentioned, uh, Commissioner Carrillo, they all have the same opportunities we have. Same opportunities that we have. What they do is up to them. Um, Mr. White? Yes, sir, Mayor Commissioners. Um, that's pretty much all we have. Unless you have any questions, we can conclude the meeting and they're going to serve lunch to you all. Okay. Move Good. to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? It passes. We are adjourned. The time is 12.01. Thank you, guys. <laughs>